for Privy this morning. How many people signed up for Privy between yesterday and today? How many of my how many new Privy clients are there? Don't forget, Privy has I think two or three trainings a week, so you guys will get a lot of value there. All right, welcome to the Elephant Challenge, everybody. This is day two. Today we're going to go through this exact agenda. Here you go. Okay, it is right here, I believe. There you go. All right, so there is what we're going to be doing today. And let me minimize this real fast. Put this on you on pause. All right, cool. So we are going to be going through a wholesale and JV contract because a lot of you guys are going to be doing JVs together. Joint venture is what JV stands for, okay? JV is what wholesale, we're going to give you guys a wholesale contract. The wholesale contract, um, let me erase this real fast. I'll be a little bit more specific here. So you're going to get a wholesale contract, an assignment contract, and then because you guys are going to, a lot of people are going to be doing JVs together, we're going to also give you guys a JV contract. The total value of these contracts, I know the wholesale contract has been rewritten multiple times. Um, we've probably spent 20 grand redoing this wholesale contract multiple times, but if you were going to go out and recreate this with an attorney, it's going to cost, it'd probably cost you about 4,000 bucks. And then an assignment contract is about $1,500. And then a JV agreement. This took a long time to like really perfect. But that, if you were going to go recreate, that's about 2000 bucks. So I'd say $7,500 of contracts we're going to give you guys today so you guys can skip all of the line. And uh, these are all written by an attorney. These are not written by me. Of course, they have been rewritten, I don't know, probably 20, 30 times. Uh, now, none of these are creative. I'm not doing any creative contracts for people in the free group. Uh, cr creative contracts I only give to my sub two community. They get redrafted every six months. Um, there's so many things that go into the training that is required. So if you guys are going to want to do creative, get co creative contracts, where do I go? Okay, how do I do that? Um, the way that you do that is you go do a deal with my sub two community members and they'll, uh, they're not going to give you a contract. They're going to say, bring me a deal and I'll help you with it. And when you help, when a sub two student helps you with a creative deal, then you can see the contracts. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay, so you want creative contracts? Then work with sub two. The creative contracts, I'm, I'll tell you, this is going to sound shocking when I tell you this, but creative contracts, I'd say have cost me in excess of $250,000 over my career to redraft, create, um, I mean, we just did one, we just did an update on it. Like we went up through all 65 documents or 65, not 65 pages, 65 documents for all the different types of transactions. And the last iteration of those contracts cost me about 17,000 bucks to update. Okay. They're uh, nationwide. Okay. These, this is such a funny question. It's like you guys want, you guys live in like freaking Puerto Rico or something. Okay, these wholesale contracts and the assignment contracts that we're going to be going through today, all right, they are, uh, these wholesale contracts, assignment contracts that we're going to be going through today are all 50 states. I'm going to write down all 50 states, just so somebody, some knucklehead doesn't come across and go, well, what about, what about uh, North Dakota? Okay. What about North Dakota? So the wholesale, this is for cash deals only. We're gonna be going through cash wholesale, cash assignments, and cash JV stuff, okay? So you guys know how to work with each other, how to lock up. Does anybody wanna do a contract with anybody in here? Does anybody wanna do a deal with anybody in here? Um, okay, cool, you do, that's great. Don't do a deal with anybody without a JV agreement, okay? Don't do a deal without anybody getting a JV agreement signed. Unfortunately, we've all been screwed in life, okay? We've all been screwed in life, and um, we want to keep that from happening. And unfortunately, human beings will do what they are incentivized to do, okay? So you want to make sure you are doing joint ventures and you have an agreement 
based on what you're uh, attempting to do. Okay. Everything is in writing. If my grandma calls me up today and she says, Pace, I want to do a deal with you. I go, grandma, not until we sign a JV agreement. I will never do a deal with anybody. Okay. That is not a JV agreement. Okay. I want to make, want to make sure that there is a JV agreement attached to everything I do. Now, um, let's erase some of this stuff. Look how cool this is that I can have a little, an actual whiteboard on my desk. This is pretty cool, right? I love this little thing. Okay, so what we're going to be doing today, like I mentioned, is we're going to be going through these contracts. That's the first thing we're going to do. And we're going to give you guys those contracts today. Okay. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of a review on what we did yesterday. Okay. This is when Laura will come in. Laura will be coming in in 50 minutes from now, roughly. Okay, so Laura's going to do a review. And then what we're going to do is Laura's going to then show you how she does some comping, do a little bit of comping, and then we're going to give you another um, est a construction estimate template. She's going to walk through that. And then we're going to go through and start calling agents on deals. Okay. Now, day three, which is tomorrow, will be a lot more of this. Okay. Calling agents, reaching out, et cetera. Okay. Do you guys enjoy it when I tell you what we're going to be doing? Do you have an expectation of what we're working on? The tough thing is so many people show up late too. And then they're like, what are we doing? Move on. And uh, what I want to talk about right in the very beginning of this this morning is why is it that people are so impatient? They, they're so happy to go to school, get a four-year degree for four years and sit in a class like a vegetable for four years, incur student uh, loan debt, learn nothing from people who are broke themselves, okay? People that are broke themselves are teaching you how to be more broke, okay? Sit there in class for four years. Cool, great, congratulations. You've just created a job for yourself. That's awesome. They don't, learn, they don't teach you how to go create value in the world and be enterprising. They teach you how to be a, an assembly line worker or go work for one of my companies. Okay, so this is why there's only 800 people in here and a couple hundred people on YouTube is because most people are drones, all right? Now, the challenge is we'll bring, we'll bring people in here. Yesterday, I, I think we had a total of about 2,000 people watching all together live. And you'll get people that go, can we move on to the next topic? <laughs> I'll talk about something for like two, three minutes. And it's such important information. And they'll say, move on to the next thing, move on to the next thing. And I'm like, if you don't understand this thing, that you're in here to joint venture with other people, here's what's going to happen. If I just rush through the information, I speak as fast as I would if somebody was super experienced, what's going to happen is half of the people are going to be left behind. Okay. And those half of the people are now no longer eligible to do deals with you because we've left them behind. And so those people show me that they're selfish. It's all about me. And those are the people that are sitting in the sandbox all by themselves in a couple of years just saying, ah, this did, that business didn't work out. It's like, guys, I've been educating for a long time. I know what people need. I know what questions they have before they think of it. And the reason why I give breath to some of the ideas and some of the concepts, like Laura yesterday brought up a great topic. And I said, we got to give this thing some breath. We got to give it like seven minutes and really expand on the co-wholesaling thing and the Facebook thing. Did anybody get value out of that seven minutes yesterday? Yet there was somebody in the side chat. It's like, please move on, make another call. And I was like, says the person that's never done a deal before telling the person that's done four or 5,000 deals before and has a team and portfolio and financial freedom, you're telling me how to educate people. Now I woke up with pure gratitude towards those people. And I'm going to tell you why I'm going to tell you why, because the universe needs duality. And this is going to sound really harsh, but it is true. They're the people, what would happen if we didn't have Walmart greeters? 
What would happen if we didn't have somebody at Costco checking the receipt? What would happen if we didn't have lifeguards? What would happen if we didn't have people flipping the burgers or serving at restaurants? Or what would happen if we didn't have school teachers? What would happen if we didn't have nurses? What would happen if we didn't have these people? It would not be a world I would want to live in. I am grateful for the people that don't believe that this is for them to the point where they want to lash out because it highlights to me that all I have to do is learn a little bit more. Like it is so amazing how little I actually have to learn to be hyper successful in this business. Just a little bit more than the next person. And if you can't even wait during a three day, nine hour challenge, but you're willing to be a drone and go four years in, in college, then two more years for a master, then two or th four more years for a doctorate. If that's the path you choose, you're willing to be patient because you like being told what to do and you like having the structure. I'm grateful because somebody has got to deliver my new baby, right? There's got to be a doctor that loves just showing up to the same place every single day. And I'm grateful for those people. And I'm not saying this negatively. I'm truly, truly grateful. And this also will remind you that when you guys start doing some of your own content, you guys start doing maybe some of your own challenges, that the people that come in and have these impatient moments are actually a reminder to you that your vibe will attract your tribe. So what happens is people see, you know, hey, Pace has a challenge, get your first deal, et cetera. And they come in and they can't just wait for the last like hour where Laura was calling and we were doing a lot of the technical mechanical things. They couldn't even wait that but they're willing to go and sit in class all semester and go to four classes and pay a school 30 grand a semester or 20 grand a semester or 10 grand a semester think about that that's the greatest scam of all time you go and sit in a class learning from people who don't know how to do the thing that they're teaching you they're teachers they're not business owners most of them and you pay a school ten thousand dollars a semester and they keep you so busy that you can't work or do anything else. And then they grade you on being a drone, yet you can't come into a three-day challenge and focus for one hour. Isn't that the most mind-boggling thing ever? But what it does for me is it shows me how great the opportunity is. How great the opportunity is for us, the small group of people that have the patience, that have the belief, they go, I don't, that's, that is not for me. That life is not for me. I'm grateful for those people because, you know, that's what makes the world work. I don't have any hate or any negative things to say about them. Nothing in my heart has any sort of negative connotation. But I just want you guys to realize the reason why I have patience is because I know that patience is one of the elements of success. Patience in myself patience in the fact that I didn't know this 10 years ago. I didn't know, some of you guys forget that there was a moment where I was in the exact same situation as you. It's been so long that some people, oh, Pace has been so successful for so long. Guys, in my mind, I'm still learning, still getting better at everything I do, being patient with myself. And being patient with myself requires me to be patient with other people as well, okay? So um, be patient with yourself and be patient with other people. And when people throw out negative things, just remember that those people are the ones that are the most hurt. Those are the people that probably need our help the most. And so if you're one of those naysayers in here, welcome. I'm here to hang out with you. And if you guys hear me make um, negative jokes about androids, you guys know I'm joking about that, right? I used to joke around about people's football teams and I literally had a guy grab me by my shirt collar because I made a joke about the bears. I know nothing about sports, nothing other than golf. I really enjoy golf, but I know nothing about anything else. And I joked, I used to joke around people's football teams and then I got threatened to get killed. So I was like, okay, dang, what can I tease people about and have make it fun for me? When I was a kid in my family with 12 kids, you think teasing was part of our daily ritual? 100%. So I get older and I think teasing is fun. And so it just shows that I have admiration for the person that I'm teasing. I'm not just teasing any old person. I'm teasing people I like. It's part of my sense of humor. And so I found something that's like, okay, 
people are already uh, people are already feuding about Apple versus Android. Why don't I just join the conversation and just tease people about it? And so I can't tease people about religion because people get upset about religion. I can't teach tease people about politics because man alive, people are just so into their minds about their politics. And then I can't tease people about sports because I've been threatened to be killed for teasing people about the bears. Okay. So I chose Androids and you guys are just on my, you guys are on my crap list. Okay. So sorry. I'm just, it's a joke. Your Androids are cool. I'll tell you I, the one thing I don't like about your Androids. And here's the funny thing is, okay. I'm going to say what I don't like about Androids. And somebody with an Android is like, oh, yeah, we, you, we can do that. You have to download an app, and then you can do it. Just so you guys know, I didn't download my phone, so I have to download. Or I didn't buy my phone, so I have to download apps to make it work. Okay? Guys, if, I, if I'm a busy person, I don't want to have to text you or, like, take the time to text you. I want to be able to, as I'm walking from one meeting to another or driving, I want to be able to voice memo you inside of the text messaging app okay that's the only thing i don't like about androids and by the way i can't text you when you guys are on a, a plane and you can't text me when i'm on a plane and people are going to be like download whatsapp y'all i didn't buy a phone so i had to download a third-party app okay in order to use it that's it. That's all I. That's all I don't like about Android. That's it. If if they could fix that one thing, I'd I'd be like, dude, I don't even know the difference between the two of them. Okay, but there's Androids or Androiders in here, and you guys are cool. You just can't voice memo me, and I won't communicate with you. Some people people are like, Pace, I text you, and you text me back. I'm like, because I don't like texting. I like voice memoing. So, sorry. There you go. That's it. So I'm just teasing. So a lot of things I'll tease you guys about. It's not a big deal. We're not being serious in here. Now, for the people that just joined, let me go through this one more time. Sorry, guys, it takes me a while. I got to wait for two, 300 people to show up late. I want you guys to write something down. Do you guys ever see me show up late to these things? Cool. Write this down on your notes. How I do anything is how I do everything. So the people that show up 20 minutes late and they're like, oh, nobody's going to notice. Guys, that's a commitment thing to yourself. You know. What you're doing, pay attention to this, is you are providing evidence to yourself that you are non-committed to your goals. And it's a subconscious thing, but when you show up late to things that are important, you show yourself evidence that you are non-committed. That's scary. These little actions are things that compound evidence that you use to build self-confidence and to build basically this new narrative about yourself. So when you're constantly late or you're showing up to these things, nobody will notice. Guys, you should be the only one that needs to notice. You showed up 10 minutes late and whatever your excuse is, it's an excuse. It's an excuse. It's not a reason. The saying is, how you do anything is how you do everything. Okay, but you shouldn't say you. You should type it in and say, how I do anything is how I do everything. I show up late. I do things later. I'll clean my room later. I'll take out the trash later. I'll clean my car later. I'll organize my life later. After this show, after this thing, after this vegetative two hours, I'm going to sit on the couch and do nothing. After, 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 after. The reason why I win is because the most important things of my day are done before my day starts. I woke up this morning, not super early today, it's Saturday. I woke up this morning about 4.30. I slowly walked downstairs. I went immediately to my computer, and I cleared out text messages and emails that I ignored for the last part of the day yesterday as, as with my wife and my kids. And I clear all that out. I plan my day. I come up with the syllabus of what we're going to be doing today. I take it, I have intention. And then... 
I make a few phone calls, a couple of voice memos. I'm going back and forth on this seller that I'm buying a business from and we're going through and he's asking, how do I deal with some tax things? And I'm voice memoing back and forth. I then start planning my week the next week before. And then I start he hearing the, my wife and my daughters rustling around upstairs, which means, hey, it's time to put down my phone. It's time for me to go spend my time focused on my girls. And I always think this is the last moment I will see my daughter, see my wife in this state, in this phase, and in this day of their life. This is the last time I will see that. So I put the phone down. So I then take the girls in the Airstream this morning. We drove around in the Airstream and we took the girls to Starbucks and I carried Monday inside and we took the stuff and Laura and Corbin are in the Airstream and we drive them back. I shower, I get ready and I get on the thing on the elephant challenge early to go through with Carly. Here's what I want to do today. It's eight o'clock in the morning and I've already accomplished more than what most people do all day long. I'm very intentional about stuff. So Am I perfect? Far from it. But I'm aware of I'm not, the fact that I'm not perfect, and it gives me the most unbelievable, fun challenge that I get to work on myself every single day. So everybody in here, you guys get to work on yourself every day. Now, as I talked about showing up late, we've had 100 extra people join since I started talking about being late. How you do anything is how you do everything. Make sense, guys? Okay. Now, one thing you'll learn about my teaching style, especially on a free live like this, is I will ask you guys to say things in the side chat. Now, that's not so much for you. It's actually for me. The reason why I ask you guys to say yes in the side chat is because it helps me I have this weird brain that I can't move to the next chapter until I see the majority of people say yes, okay? Now, here's what I want to do on the ch side chat, okay? Here is the moment. Here's the moment that you all have to put your name in there like Mapunu, okay? And other people right now that are putting your name in the side chat, put your name one time in the side chat. Today, we are gonna crack down on a law. The law we are gonna crack down on today is that if you fill up my Zoom chat with your spam information about yourself and what you do, Carly's gonna be pu pushing people out of the, the, the Zoom today. So today, it's the day to put your information in the side chat, tell everybody your name, tell everybody your contact information, tell everybody what you do. If you're new, say, I'm brand new, I need help. If you're a sub two student, say, I'm a sub two student, I'm a badass, I'm trained, I've got access to training for the rest of my life. Whatever it is that you wanna say, now is the time to say it because what we'll do is we will save the chat and we will email it to everybody at the end of the session today. So you don't need to fill up the side chat with all of your stuff about, I, I, I want to do deals with you and here's what I do. Are we all on the same page there? If I see you guys starting in five minutes, blasting the chat with your name and what you do and all that kind of stuff, you're going to get pulled out. The side chat is for me. Number one person it's for is me. The side chat is for me to know that we're ready to move on to the next page of the book, okay? Not, there's not a literal book. Somebody's going, wait, what, 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 what book? I didn't get a book. It's a figure of speech, okay? In my mind, we've got a handful of things we're gonna be doing today. Here, here they are for the people that showed up late. Shame on you. Today, we're gonna be going through the wholesale contract, the assignment contract, and the JV contract. We talked about the fact that these contracts um, have cost me and my team, I'd say, I don't know, we've probably spent about $25,000 or more on this contract, revising it over the years. Assignment contract, probably ten dollars to $12,000 revising over the year. JV agreement, probably another $10,000. But, but none of that matters, right? You don't care about that. You care about, like, if I had to go get these contracts from a, an attorney, you probably spent about $4,000 on this contract You'd spend about, I don't know, probably $2,000 on this assignment contract, and then you'd spend about $1,500 on this JV agreement. So we're gonna give all of these to you today. It's about $7,500 in documents. These are all for cash. These are not for creative. If you guys wanna do a creative deal, here's what you do. You wanna do a creative deal? 
I don't do, I don't teach creative finance in the elephant challenge ever. My sub two students can help you out with that. They're not going to give you contracts. They're going to do a deal with you. And as you do a deal with them, they will bring the contracts to the table as one of the several pieces of, of value that they bring to the table. Okay. Now, you have 30 seconds to type in your information in the side chat. And if you have already done it, don't do it again. And in 30 seconds, I'm going to tell you guys the new rule is stop it. Okay. So today we're going to go through the, these contracts. Then we're going to do a little bit of a, a review when Laura shows up. Then Laura's going to go through the construction template. This is another document we're going to give you guys today. And then Laura's going to go through about 45 minutes with agents today, calling agents on deals. Okay, we're going to do the, actually do the business. And then tomorrow on day three, we are going to do a lot more of primarily just reaching out to agents. Okay. All right, guys, are we done putting our information in the side chat? Are we done? Have we purged the, have we done it? We've done the thing. Oh my gosh, I got my name out. I got my information out. We're done. Going forward, okay, going forward at 830, that's in one minute. If you guys do it, I'm going to tell Carly to pull you out. Okay. Are we all in agreement? Can we have a pinky promise? Everybody pull, put your pinky out. Give me your pinky. Pinky promise right now. Stop doing it. You're done. Everybody stop it. We've done it. You've had your opportunity. The, the time is up. Okay. Your, your information from the side chat, by the way, here's a better thing to do. Okay. Here's a way better thing to do. I'm, what you, guys want to, you guys want a little hack that I give my sub two community? If you are in my sub two community, you already know, I already know. I can look at your name in Zoom and you put your contact information, what you do, like look at Robert Ho, for example, okay? I'll give you a really good, this is a really great example, okay? I'm gonna do a little screenshot of this and I'm gonna show you guys how awesome this is. Like Robert Ho, smart, smart, smart. You do what I tell you, this is what happens, okay? Let me do a little screen share. Your name in Zoom should look like this. Robert Ho, see the Sub2 logo right there? Obviously, Robert is a Sub2 student. He's also a Gator, which means he has money, access to money. And there's his contact information right there. You see Zachary Jones? Zachary Jones screwed up. How do I know who you, how do I know if you're a sub two student or not? Maybe if you're a brand new person and you're not a sub two student or a Gator, type in newbie, type in I'm new, type in something in your name, give us some information. So then therefore you don't need to put your information in the side chat anymore. You just need to say yes when I tell you to say yes. It's not a blank screen, guys. People can see it, okay? Sabrina says, I see it. Okay. Um, I see everything. I see it too. Okay. The reason you don't see it is because you're on your silly phone. You're not using a computer. You're sitting here in this high value environment and you're using your phone to watch a live. Use a damn computer like an adult. Okay. If somebody sees the screen, everybody should be able to see the screen. It's because you guys are seeing it on your, phone, on, your, uh, on your Androids, okay? Do we all understand that you guys should be going into Zoom and changing your name to, here's my name, I'm a sub two student, put the peace sign. If you're, an L, if, you're a, if you're a Gator, put the Gator emoji and your phone number. There you go. Then that way, like Asaf, who I've already said, stop putting your information in the side chat, can stop putting your information in the side chat. Guys, change your Zoom name. Don't put your information in the side chat anymore. Put, in, put it in your Zoom name. Okay? Are we all on the same page? Stop putting it in the side chat, change your Zoom name so that every time you say yes and every time you answer my question and every time I tell you to make a comment in the side chat, you now can have everybody see your name, what you do, 
Are you sub two? Are you Gator? Everybody can see what you do. Like Angie Milanazzo, she actually has her Instagram name as her name. Colorado, I'm a sub two student. And boom, there's her phone number. Oh my gosh, guys, there you go. Take a moment and go and change your Zoom name to something more intentional. Make sense? Give me a yes. Mystique Drakes. Mystique Drakes, you typed your name in the side chat. That's not what I'm asking you to do. Change your Zoom name, the name that pops up in the side chat, to match what other people are doing. Juan Rodriguez, same thing with you. Jennifer Hastings, same thing with you. John, Francisco Osario, same thing. Okay? Everybody should change your Zoom name. Anna? Change your Zoom name, okay? Edward Mary, change your Zoom name. JD, change your Zoom name. Christine Glasner, change your Zoom name. Okay, log out, log back in. Super easy. Rachel Weaver says, I got it. Sharin says, why are we changing our Zoom name? Sharin, have you, Sharin let's have a conversation. That's a question that tells me you have not been paying attention for like the last 15 minutes. How is that even remotely possible? Now you're going to get picked on a little bit. Sharin, you there? I'm here. Hi. Have you been asleep at the wheel? No, I have been, um, I've been, I've been having him Wi-Fi issues. So I've been in and out since like the past 30 minutes, honestly. It's so I okay, missed a lot. It. Okay. Yeah. So great question. Sharin, if you put your name, do you ever see people in this, my side chats on my trainings that just flood the things with like, hi, my name is Pace Morby and I can close your deals. And did you ever see that? Oh yeah. Yeah. I see that all it's the hyper time. annoying. It's like a level 11 annoying, right? Yeah. Okay. So wouldn't it be smarter for people to just change their Zoom name to Sharin Bashar, newbie? Are you a new person? Uh, yeah, I am new. Yeah. Okay, I'm so type in the chat, change your Zoom name, Sharin Bashar, newbie, okay. city I live in, and how you want people to contact you. Oh. Now, every time you say yes to a question I have, like, hey, does everybody understand where we're at right now? And you type in yes nobody's going to see Sharin Bashar. They're going to see Sharin Bashar, newbie. I need help. Phone number. That makes sense. With yeah. the word yes underneath it. Every time you now respond to a question I have, something I say, you now have everybody get to see your name. Okay. That makes Does that sense. make sense, everybody? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for asking the question. Ingrid Hernandez, I know who you are, but you should have your name changed from Ingrid Hernandez to Ingrid Hernandez, Pace Mastermind student, Pace's business partner, Pace's lender, Pace's whatever. I've done a ton of stuff with Ingrid Hernandez. Change your damn name, Ingrid. Sharin, thank you so much. The great question. It probably helped a lot of people. Holly, let's 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 do a little QA for a couple of minutes as people change their Zoom names. People are like, dang, this is so helpful. Why does Pace always come up with the good ideas? I don't know. He's good at that stuff. Holly, what's up? Good morning, Pace. Oh, dang. Holly, you sound like you got a cowboy hat on right now. I have followed you for quite some time. Amazing. Tell me what you need. How can I help you today? Okay, I do realize I need to change my name. So as I'm watching you on my laptop, I'm going on my phone to change my name. No problem. Um, last night... Your wonderful wife shared a whole bunch of information. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I went in and I did exactly script by script what you all suggested. And in the area that I'm located, well, I don't want it. Would you prefer me to wait till Laura gets on or would you like me to share with you? Share with me. Well, I'm, I'm okay. just, I'm killing like probably five to seven minutes because I'm waiting for everybody to change their Zoom name. So. Okay. Um. I noticed uh, there were a lot of homes, surprisingly, that were pre-foreclosure. Mm -hmm. So when I went on to look for the specific names and the companies, um, got the names, and I went over to where Laura said, go to, for instance, Texas Commission Report, 
corporate commission. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I put their information in and they're wanting to charge me. Is that a normal, normal thing? It's not a free. Every state's going to be a little bit different. Um, Here's, here's what Texas is. Texas is what we call a non-disclosure state. Okay. A non-disclosure state. So they don't like sharing information about people. And so Texas is a little bit more challenging. You can go to opencorporates.com and opencorporates.com will give you the information. Okay. Okay. Open, opencorporates.com. Did you go there? No, I didn't. But I also went to True People Search just to see if I could find it on True People Search. And they asked more specific questions that I wasn't able to answer just because I didn't know the person or the yeah. entity. So um, that, that kind of put me out of stop. Okay. But I love that I was able to follow you all step by step by step and get yeah. the results. And uh, be it's able almost to like it works. Oh my gosh. Well, I, I have flipped um, a few homes before, but not having a formula. I only gauged based on my inexperience and lack of knowledge. So now that I, and I was successful, I was fortunate enough that I was successful, but it's nice to have formulas and going into the LLC, which I have been connected with prime and following all your suggestions with that. Um, it's a different level of protection that I need. So the formulas have helped where previously on my own, when I've done real estate, uh, because I'm a teacher, I use it to supplement my income Yeah. and I wouldn't, I would do it ever so many years. Now I want to go full-time into this. It's addicting. I'm excited. I love to share with family and friends, the knowledge that I have Nice. and, and just be able to help other people. So um, I'm very grateful to you and to your wife because it's really going to help me on a teacher salary and I'm single. It is tight. It's really tight. And yeah. I've loved real estate and this is my why this is getting me out of, as you say, the day to day, go to a job, do the normal. And although I love teaching, I have a cap. And I can't get past that cap as a teacher. Yeah, where you know, real estate is my my, per, my personal assistant is all used to be a teacher as well. As of forty five days ago, I hired her, master's degree in child development. She has a class of uh, twenty five children with children with autism. She has two um, assistants underneath her, so she's doing a lot. Right, she's managing two people. She's a per, a manager of two people, and twenty five kids. And then you're basically dealing with all these kids parents who, you know, the, the, the parents drop the kids off to you. You're basically fixing bad habits that the parents gave them all day long. And then you send the kids back to the parents just to reinst- they reinstill those bad habits and they come, come back to you and you're like, oh my gosh. And I'm sitting there going, how much do you make? You know, I met her at a party and um, I said, uh, how much do you make? She to- told me, I was like, for all of that work, she's like, yeah, but I do it because I help I get, I get to help people. And I said, let me tell you something. I feel really bad for teachers that I, when I say this, I said, that's a load of shit. Because what you're doing is you're helping 30 kids at a time. And that is your real cap. Forget about your finances. And we already know that your finance, they don't pay teachers enough. They should be pay, paying teachers three times what you guys get paid. That definitely is a cap. But think about the cap of the amount of people that you actually get to impact. When you have financial freedom, you have the ability, you could go build your own school. You know, I'm buying, I'm buying a school right now, 350 kids. It's a private school and we get it. We're changing the curriculum to be all entrepreneurial based. And I'm thinking I get to help 350 kids every school year. That's in your future, Holly, the, 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 the ability to impact way more kids. Right now, you're being, you're being capped at how many p- kids you can directly I- impact. Think about scaling that and getting to a point where if that truly is your passion, helping kids, your financial freedom will help you help thousands of kids a year versus 30 to maybe 100, right? And I'm sure you've thought about that 100 times because 
you like to share your experiences and you like to share what you're doing and you know you like to gain knowledge and impart that knowledge on other people that hopefully it changes their life but right now the biggest cap that you have is how many kids you can impact in any given year yes sir so thank you very much for the opportunity to learn and grow i'm a student at heart and i'm gonna make this work like there's no there's no question behind it i'm all in what city are you in i am in houston texas cool i got i own i own 620 doors in houston texas Woo! yeah i mean as of last year it was like 40 but that we just bought a big 580 unit deal in um north west texas gorgeous little area Mm -hmm. and uh bought it on creative finance 580 units we're going to turn into 620 units and hold it for probably five to seven years and roll it into something even bigger but i like houston it's an amazing market um there's a lot of deals in fact our houston students every saturday do something we call power hour every saturday go to downtown houston they all call Right now, I think power hour probably is going on. Uh, power hour starts, I think, in 15 minutes. They're all in physical proximity of each other, so it's different than this challenge. And they all get together. Houston is one of our bigger markets. We probably have about, I think we have about 800 students in Houston just right there. They get together. They call together. They work on their businesses together in physical proximity in the same room. I don't know about you, Holly, but I'm a physical person. I want to be in the same office. Yeah, that's my preference. I like face to face. Yeah, me too. So um, Houston's a great market. I love it. Are you wanting to do more fix and flips? Are you starting to want to buy and hold? What do you what's your big goal? What do you want to do? Okay, so this is this is what I I have done in the past. I fixed and flipped. Um, I had really good success with that in the properties. Mm -hmm. Um, So what I what's my biggest challenge right now is funding just to get going. And I understand creative finance. I I get that. But I don't, for instance, even if I were to get a sub two property, let's say Uh it would need a little work. I don't even have money reserves for that. And I understand I could go the Gator route to borrow that, but I wouldn't even have money to pay the Gator loan off. So by starting- your, Your education is very limited. So let me fill this in for you for a second, okay? Okay. So let's say that I get a deal. Right. Here's yeah. the seller. Seller sells the house to me here. I, my name is Holly and I just bought it sub two. And the seller says, just take over. In fact, I could give you a, a house I bought yesterday. No money down. I, we could go through the whole story of that. Um, my student, my students buy deals zero down all the time, but zero down means the seller's getting re- receiving zero and you're not qualifying for a bank and you're, you know, all that kind of stuff. However, okay. Holly still has to pay for closing costs, right? Right. Okay. Holly still has to pay for maybe some renovation, maybe some furniture. If you decide that you're going to turn this into an Airbnb or something along those lines. So where does that cost come from? Well, a Gator is not really meant to be a long term. They're not long term lenders. Okay. Okay. They're not long term. They're short term. Okay. So they can help you out with like closing costs. They can help you out with some reno and some furniture, but they're going to want to get their money back within three months, something like that. Okay. Correct. So that's not a good fit for you. No. Okay, this is one of the biggest things I teach in my community, in the sub two community, is we teach people how to structure inside of sub two. We teach people how to structure either PML or PMP. Okay. PML is private money lender. Okay. So here's Holly. And let's say you were a student, which you're obviously not, but let's say you go to another student. The student says, Yeah, I'll give you a five year loan at 10%. That's a private money lender. They'll typically stay in the deal three to five years. How do you pay them back? Well, the cash flow from the deal pays their monthly payment. And then after five years, the property appreciating, you can either sell the property, refinance the property, or do something along those lines to pay that lender back and take your profit. Or when you're brand new, I prefer you do a PMP. PMP stands for private money partner. Okay. So for example, let me watch this in the chat side chat. How many of my students are becoming private money lenders or private money partners with each other inside of the community. Okay, see the all the yeses and the me's? Yes. This is why people join my community is because we train people how to do this. What a private money partner is, Holly, is you go, hey, I'm a sub, I'm in sub two. Who's another sub two student that has, you know, their private money lender? 
but I don't want a private money lender because a private money lender now has a monthly payment. I'd rather have a par private money partner who brings, the, I bring the deal, Holly brings the deal to the table and you bring the money to the table and we go 50-50 on the deal. So you get 50% of the cash flow, I get 50% of the cash flow, you get 50% of the appreciation, I get 50% of the appreciation, you get 50% of the tax depreciation, so do I. Um, and then when the property sells or refinances or whatever it is, let's say 10, 15, 20 years down the road, you didn't ever, you never had to make a, month, a monthly payment to them because they weren't a private money lender. They were a private money partner. Does that make sense? I'm, I'm still struggling just a little, like I get the logistics. Okay. So how do you acquire if I, if I can't come up with the 50%? I didn't tell you, Holly, you missed the part where I said you brought the deal to the table. They brought okay. the money to the table. Okay. Okay. That was it. Yes. You're bringing okay. no money to the table. Okay. If People you, are if, if you ever say I need money for a deal, just means you didn't pay attention. I'm not saying that to you. I'm saying that to everybody else. No, no, it's totally cool. Okay. So that's, that's a sub two property. Um, would, could I start with a sub two property and then put it into a flip, flip and fix to start building my reservoir cash reservoir? Yeah, that's called a sub tail. So I bought it subject to and I take it retail. That's a sub tail. So I bought it sub two, take it retail. Okay. Oh, sub tail, yeah. I, I didn't realize that. I didn't. And this is why people pay to learn from me. So uh, you're, um, there's so many different strategies. People think they need to start with cash deals, by the way. I don't do cash deals ever. I stopped doing cash deals. What does a cash deal mean? It means I'm going to the seller and giving them cash and paying them off. I don't do those anymore. Okay. I do only creative finance, seller finance, subject to Morby method deals. You don't know what Morby method is. You're so new. But you can go to my YouTube and type in Morby method. It's a whole other strategy. Um, so I don't use any of my own money at all. And you're like, how? Well, because I bring in students as my partners. And they, somebody, if I bring money to the table, here's the other thing. You want to get cash reserves, Holly? Here's a great way to get cash reserves, okay? There's so many different ways to make money in real estate. It's crazy. So think about this. Here's the seller. They're living in this house. Let's say one of my sub two students, his avatar is DTS, okay? His, you don't know what your avatar is, Holly. I imagine you're so new to me. You probably haven't learned what your avatar is. But my students, go ahead. Fix and flip, that's it. That's boring. We've got to do a lot more than just fix and flip. Okay. Fix and flippers can maybe get some cash, but that cash goes away pretty quick, right? It does. It does. Yes. Okay. It's nice, but uh, Pedro, well, said, Pedro says nothing wrong with boring. Yeah, there is, bro. That's why it's called boring. It's not called fun. There is something wrong with boring. It's the specific reason why they called it boring. Yes, it is. It is. There is something wrong with it. Otherwise, they would call it fun, right? The only reason I was thinking cash reserves is that okay, I acquire property as Mahalia, you say. I, I totally get it. Let me let me just say that I get why you want to do cash reserves. Okay, I'm not telling you, hey, go and buy and hold. If you just okay. want, if you never want to buy and hold, that's perfectly fine. When I say boring, here here's the thing that I'm saying boring about mm -hmm. fixing and flipping is one strategy. That's it. Yes, I agree. Okay, so if you're trying to open up the doors of opportunity and every strategy you have is just another key to more opportunities, you have one strategy for the rest of your life. Meanwhile, there's no exaggeration, literally 50 plus different strategies you can imp implement to make money in real estate. So if you're going, oh, no, I'm just a fix and flipper, you're basically saying all these doors of opportunity that are in front of me, I can't even open them because my one little key that I have can only open a fix and flip door. Okay. So well, I'm just trying to tell you, you need to learn other strategies along the way. I'm not telling you to, to skip fix and flip, but along the way, please yes. don't ever try to have a goal as a fix and flipper that it's okay to be, to do fix and flip, but you want to learn other strategies besides fix and flip. Otherwise you'll be in the same position you're currently in right now. I a hundred percent. Yes. I completely agree. Cool. So fixing and flipping is a um, it is a side hustle. It is not a career. Correct. 
Okay, everybody write that down. Anybody that's fixing and flipping as a full-time career, guess what happened to you last year? You got your entire business handed back to you with a plate of crap. Okay, fixing and flipping is not a long-term strategy. It's a side hustle for people. It just is. Does everybody agree with that? It's a side hustle. It's good. Make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. I love it. It's great. We do it, but it's like the smallest part of our business. So here's, here's my point I want to make just real quick. There are sub two students that I train to be direct to seller. That means they're going to go directly to the seller and negotiate. They're going to get a deal under contract. Here's their contract. And guess what? They might be new or they want to save up their cash reserve. So what they do is they sell that contract to a different sub two student. And that sub two student has a different avatar. That avatar is I want to be a buy and holder. Okay. So let's say this sub two student locks up the deal sells it to this sub two student here and they get a $20,000 finder's fee. Okay. Okay. You can build cash reserves that way too. Yes. Okay? You didn't have to go and do hire contractors and deal with all the rigmarole and all that kind of stuff and whatnot. You can get cash reserves by assigning sub two deals if you want to. Okay. Okay. There are also, there are, let's, let's go through the fix and flip um, avatar. The fix and flip avatar says, I'm going to buy it sub two and I'm going to take it retail. You can do this with cash deals also, cash deals as well. And you're saying, okay, well, I'm going to get a hard money lender for my, for 80% of the purchase. And then I'm going to bring in a private money lender for the other 20% of the purchase plus my renovation. Okay. So you can truly do fix and flips with no money out of pocket. Okay. If you're doing a sub two deal, you don't really need hard money because you're taking over somebody else's loan temporarily while you renovate the house. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So you're still going to need, you know, some private money. You're not going to need a 20% down payment private money lender. You just need somebody that comes in with closing costs plus renovation, et cetera. And this person can come along and make money with you. It could yes. be a private, private money partner if you want. Okay. Yes. So you made money fixing and flipping a deal that you didn't have to find. Somebody else found it and made $20,000 in the process. The $20,000, where does it come from? comes from your private money partner. They brought the $20,000 to the table plus the closing costs, plus the renovation. And because you put the parties together, Ollie, you're the one that gets 50% of or 100% of the fix and flip profits depending on how you structure. I could give you literally 10 hours on just this conversation, okay? And why, why would I have to get, give you 10 hours on this conversation? Is because everybody's a little bit different. This person right here, this is a human being. That, that, that requires rapport. That requires trust, right? That re, th This person requires and has a different desire than the next person. I get another person, they're going to say, oh, no, I want 80% per, I want eighty percent on the, uh, eighty percent of the deal. It's like, no, I don't want that. I'm going to go to this person. That requires some work on your end, okay? Yeah. Yes. And th this is where people stop. They go, oh, work, and I don't know exactly how this all works. I'm just going to stop. Okay, there's so many ways to make money in real estate without any money of your own. If you ever have a, a money excuse, it just means you have a creativity excuse. Okay, it's never, there's never a reason you can't do a deal with no money out of your pocket, whether it's a cash deal, a creative deal, or otherwise. And also, there's no other way you, there's multiple other ways you can make money to build cash reserves. Also, what do you need cash reserves for? Well, I was trying to build cash reserve because... I wanted fix and flip as just a component under my real estate portfolio with enough cash reserves. I would be able to deal with construction, you know, rehab, whatever, whatever I needed to do to fix a property. Okay. So Holly, you sound like you're not in your twenties. You sound like you're, you at least have gotten probably at least to your thirties, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. So you have kids? Um, they're older. They're 23 and 24. Okay, cool. So you've got kids. You realize that your kids one day were one year old and two weeks later, they were 23 years old. I know, right. <laughs> okay. Sure. We, yes. Anybody have kids? You guys agree with this? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. So do you think you have time? No, that's running against me at this point. Yes, but guess, who else, guess what else is running against you is yourself. Because if you're sitting here saying, I, Holly... I'm going to try, I'm going to stick to the one thing I know, which is fixing and flipping in order to get reserves 
to then do the thing I want to do, how long is that going to take you to get to those reserves? One to two years? Probably. Yeah, just because that sounds really exciting. I know, I know. I just don't want to financially put myself in a position where I have several properties and then something construction wise, a roof needs fixed or or something needs fixed. And I'm okay. Great so Holly, with Holly, let's let's bad. let's do it this way. Okay. Okay. Let's say I'm Holly <laughs> and I I find a, a person, I'm gonna give them a name. Okay, because I think this is maybe where you're stuck is because you just, there's this ambiguous word, private money lender. You, uh, there's a faceless person here. Okay. Let's say, let's say this person's name is Pace. Okay. Okay, and I come to you and I say, hey, Holly, you th everybody thinks I'm a trillionaire, but I'm not. I, a lot of times, have very little money, but I, right now, I have a lot of money. Let's say I have $500,000 in cash sitting here, and I go, hey, Holly, I'm really busy doing all these things in my life but I have $500,000 I'll bring to projects and I'll pay not only for the uh, closing costs, but I'll pay for the reno. And not only will I pay for the closing costs and the reno, I'll pay for the oopsies. I'll pay for the mistakes. I'll pay for the utilities because I'm the person that brings the money to the table. What do you need cash reserves for when you have a pace? I agree, but I'm just, I need to find out who the paces are. They're in my sub two community. I've been screaming at you for the last 20 minutes about this. No, no, no. It's true. It's true. I just didn't understand that one entity could do all of that or would be willing to do all that. That's I thought what they, they would, do. I thought they would just contribute like to one component and then I would no. have to have several hard money lenders. No, they bring it all to the table. Oh, I would. I did not realize that. I thought hard money lenders only chose certain. It, the, this is not a hard money lender, Holly. A hard money lender is a company. I am a private money lender. I'm a person. The P starts st stands for private. I'm a person. I make my own decisions. Oh, okay. So then the terms are based between me and the private money lender. Yes, remember that part where I said they need rapport, they have, it's based on trust, yeah. rapport, all that stuff, that's what I'm referencing. Okay, I understand. The terms, in the terms in which and how much I charge for this 500,000, you could do it 100 different ways. I, I literally in my sub two community, I think I have 30 hours of training just on this one topic. Okay. Okay, so here's, here's a couple of different ways you can do it. Let's say Holly comes to me and she says, hey, I wanna bring deals to the table, and I will also manage the contractors. So you're bringing the deal and the management, I bring the money, okay? Okay. You and I could go, hey, let's just go 50-50 on the deal. So let's say the, the project goes and makes $100,000. Well, guess what? I make 50 grand plus I get my money back and you make 50 grand. Okay, that's one way of doing it. Okay. An another way of doing it is if I don't like you, we're just barely starting out. I go, eh, why don't we do a 60, 40? Let's see how it goes. You take 40, I'll take 60. But as you bring more properties to me, don't you think I'm gonna give you a, a better cut on the deal? Absolutely, yes, sir. Okay, so it, Holly, do you really need cash reserves? Do you want, again, going back to your kids, right? One day, mm -hmm. and my, my wife will be here for this too. Um, I won't bring my wife into this, <laughs> but again, one, one day your kids are one years old. This is great for a mama like you. Two days later, your kids are 23 years old. Yes. And you think you have the time to build cash reserves. Yes, not enough. You don't have time. I don't. I honestly don't pace. What you need is you need relationships. Sounds stupid. Sounds like you sound like you're a very friendly person. Mm -hmm. Thank which you. Which is ironic that you're missing the entire most important part of why I built a community of people. Okay. You need relationships of people. Now, what's funny, Holly, here's the other question and problem you're having. Okay. Problem is you're thinking everybody wants to be Holly. You're thinking everybody wants to go out and flip. So why, if, if, I, if everybody's trying to do thing, the thing I'm trying to do, 
Anybody in here in the side chat, give me a yes in the side chat for this. How many people in here would be so happy to never have to find a deal or manage a deal and you would just be so happy to just bring your money to the table? See all my students oh. that are saying yes? Oh, but I like flipping and multifamily and doing okay, different- Okay, Holly, at what I'm showing you, look, you, can you see the side chat? Yes, I did not know that pace. I did not understand that- Those are the um, people that don't it. wanna be you. They wanna partner with you. This is why I do these challenges. In fact, they're grateful every day they wake up and they pray, they go, go, go to God and they go, God, thank you for making Holly a real person because she wants to go find the deal and manage the contractors. And she likes the fun part of picking the paint colors and the carpet selections. And I, that's the last thing on the planet that I ever want to do. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to just bring money to the table. And what you're telling yourself over here, Holly, is I can't wait to spend the next two years of my life building reserves. You listen to Dave Ramsey much? No, uh-uh. This is a very Dave Ramsey thought process. I'm going to take two to three years of my life to get the one thing that I could accomplish in one day by finding the right relationship. And I bring my relationships to you. This is why I turn the chat on. You guys go to other people's lives. You guys go to other people's challenges. How many times do you guys see the chat is not encouraged to actually have their name, their contact information? 99% of the challenges... Look, even Hugo's like, I did not know this. I'm speechless. Should we just end the challenge right now? You guys got enough value now? We're just done. So Holly, the reason I'm giving this so much breath is because I want to make sure you understand how important this is. And I'm leveraging you as um, a way to answer the questions for everybody else. Was this helpful for everybody to have Holly picked on a little bit? Okay, so Holly, you feel better now? Yes, because I thought yeah. I thought I didn't have anywhere to go. Thank you, Pace. You're welcome. It's my job. Thank you. Thank you for telling for telling us your, your story. And I'm telling you, you've put in your heart and soul into those kids. Who's taking care of Holly? Who's helping Holly Me. out? Yeah. Thank you. You're I, I appreciate it. I really did not know. I know you said private money lenders were there to help, but I didn't know to the extent yeah. that they were willing to. So I want a property before the end of the year. <laughs> the end of the year? Before the end of the Why year. Why so long? Why are you shooting your goal? So guy, anybody in here feel like you could get a property like literally between today and tomorrow? This is why my wife is in here. Look at this baby somebody I, I just told everybody I go guess the sex of the baby based on this statement the statement is now that we know the sex of the baby this will for sure be the last baby we have no I didn't because then it's like one way you go all right let's say if it's a boy it's like well yeah now we're having a boy we're done another way to say that is go yeah we have another we're having another girl Therefore, we're done because all Pace knows how to make is babies or what girl babies. Wow, you look hot today. How you doing? You want to get pregnant? All right. Holly, was this helpful? That was phenomenal, Pace, because I, I did not understand until you explained it that way. And so now I do, now I'm hung, like I was hungry before, but I, I'm ready. Like now that I understand it, I am ready to go. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you something that's going to sound like a pitch to you. And it's not okay. a pitch. Okay. You're obviously not a student of mine. Just, just because of finances. I understand. I totally get it. There's a big thing that I want you guys to write down. You need a community of people to be successful in real estate. And that community of people are people that are different. They have different desires, different resources, different relationships, different experiences that you collectively bring together. Okay, it's the same thing. You go to your school every single day, Holly. What if Holly was the only person in that school? 
And based on your experiences and what you teach, would that school be successful? No. No, because you have to have different experience levels of teachers teaching different topics so that the kids have a well-rounded education. Correct. It's the same thing with a great community. You have people that are private money lenders. You have people that are gators. You have people that are transaction coordinators, people that are reaching out to sellers, people that are reaching out to agents, people that are helping out with escrow side of things. People that are like, I'm actually a private money lender. I'm a, I'll partner with you. I'll actually get on the phone, go and go to an appointment for you. You need literally 20 or 30 different types of relationships. You need thousands of relationships as you should have. The problem is, Holly, I'm going to take a guess just because I've been teaching. I, I know where you're at, what you're doing. I can guess your age. I can guess whether you're a student of mine based on the questions you're asking me. I'm going to guess that you have some really great relationships in your life, but very, very few relationships that benefit you financially. True. That is your number one problem right now. True. It is not, is not your education. It's not the information. It is truly you're lacking relationships of people that A, can bring things to the table that you don't have. B, you guys can share your wins together. Like, who are you going to share your wins with today, Holly? People in your family that are going to roll your eyes like, oh, here's Holly again talking about her flips. Right, right. It's true. They're being nice to you because they're like, Holly's awesome. Like, she's a good friend of mine. I love her. But at the end of the day, the people you should be sharing these types of wins with are people that are doing the same thing as you because they're going to share some wins with you and you guys will champion each other and scale together. Okay. It is yes. truly the most important thing that you need as a community of people to help you out. And so this is why I built the sub two community and the Gator tribe is so people can get together and I encourage and champion people to partner with me and I fund their deals and I sponsor their deals and I bring my credit to the table when there's credit needed and I bring my proof of funds and I bring my experience and my team and Molly and all these amazing people in my company come in and help out. Okay. Yes. If you are only learning on YouTube or in class, you will never be successful in real estate at a scaled model. You'll never be able to do it full time. So write down when you decide, hey, it's time for me to invest in a mentorship. Don't join a mentorship ever in real estate. Join a community of people that are going to help you out. Yes. Okay. You're not ready for that now, and that's perfectly fine, but join a community. As far as I'm aware of it, I only know one community in real estate. It's our community. It's the, trans the top tier TCs, the Gators, and Sub2. That's the only community I know. Everybody else is a class. Okay, look, there you go. Lori says, I lost too much. Guys, how much money have you guys spent on, cl on classes in real estate that – brought you very little value. And more importantly, Holly, look what I do for my sub two students. You know who I do this elephant challenge for? It's not even for you. That's the secondary dot. That's the second domino. The first domino is I'm doing this for my sub two students because guess what? There's a sub two student, Holly, that you will bring a deal to that they will end up being the private money partner or private money lender on. And you guys will go do deals together. But the only way you met each other is because I put the elephant challenge together. Yes. And I'm, I'm raising my community up on a pedestal and I'm saying, Holly, go work with my community. Go do deals with them. In fact, Dawn Walker, a, a, a leader in my community, she did her first deal from a baby elephant last year. Somebody, you, you would be what I call a baby elephant. Somebody's just getting started and needs to hold on. To, you know, you, your trunk needs to hold on to somebody's tail in front of you. Correct. Say, lead me, take me down the path you guys are already going on. You have the experience, you have the stuff. Let me latch onto you. Don Walker made her first $17,000 from a free elephant challenge because I championed my students to, be, to have deals brought to them. So I'm doing this specifically, yes, to give you some information and to make you feel confident and get, get you more excited. But the most important thing I'm doing here is one, raising my students on a pedestal so that you know who to go work with and you will bring opportunities to them and you guys will collectively make money together. That is the most game changing thing in all of real estate, in my opinion. Okay. Yes. So, I love it. If you are one of my students, I want you guys to say in the side chat, I'm here to help. Type that in there. I'm here to help. Okay. Here to help. 
Holly, you see all these people in here? Yes, sir. What I want you to understand is that these people, my community members, are they have 32 Zooms a week for the rest of their life, role-playing, private money, underwriting, uh, corporate structure, creative finance, sub two, seller finance, lease options, anything you could imagine, we train on every single week. They have access to that for the rest of their lives and they're going in there calling sellers for each other, doing this all week long. They are here in the elephant challenge not to learn, okay? Literally, there is probably out of the 1,500 people total we have here, I would say there's probably 800 people here that already know everything that Laura and I are, are doing because we've done it a thousand times at a, a much deeper level for them. They are literally here only to help Holly. I'm excited. I understand it better now. I, I didn't before. Cool. Should I, should I quit everything I'm doing and become a teacher? Oh, no, Lord, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're doing just fine teaching us. You're, you're reaching, because what you understand is, for example, what you're teaching, what I'm learning from you, I'm teaching, my daughters love it and they want to learn and I can help set up sub two properties that years from now they will benefit from. So it's generational. Yes. And I get to help. Um, my long story short, my father passed on Easter and when he passed, he had just enough money for his burial. And I thought, I want to leave a better legacy. Yeah. I want to leave a beggar. And so I'm learning through prime how to set up a better legacy so that monies aren't just for my burial, but yeah. transportation back and forth. Cause people don't realize there's money with that. There's people taking off from work. There's, there's a whole bunch of things involved with that. You want to, you so want to hear, hear, this is the most mind boggling thing ever. Sorry. My, my wife's like, my husband told me he needed me at nine o'clock and now we're 15 minutes late. So let me just show you this real quick. Okay. I was talking to my partner, Cody, the other day about one house I have on a property on Lemon Street. Okay. We bought this property roughly four, five years ago. We buy, we buy it creatively at the time it had basically no equity. Okay. Four or five years later, we're looking at all of our properties. And I look at this one, it has $400,000 in equity on this one house. Now one house, Holly, if your father bought one house as a rental, his entire life, just one, he would have left his family with $400,000 just in a matter of a couple of years. Think about if you buy, 10 of those in your lifetime. I have students that buy 20, 30, 40, and 50 of these. I'm not exaggerating when I say this, per year. Think about the compound effect of that. 10, 10 in your lifetime, okay? How much money do you think you need to retire, Holly? Like truly need to retire. You never have to work again. Um, a, a lump number? Um, I would say by the time I get there, I'll need about 800,000. Oh my gosh, Holly, you're going to need a lot more than that. Yeah. Because watching my dad's medical bills and medicine, oh my gosh, y'all, as you age, it's phenomenal. It's the number. Here's the number for you. I mean, this is going to be scary. The real number yeah. with inflation, everything is going to be yeah. about 5 million bucks. Yeah, it, it's up there. Yes. Sir. And do you, do you want to be sitting there going, man, I can't go visit my grandkids because the flight's 600 bucks. Right. And exactly. I can't go do this. This will allow you to do anything you want, obviously within reason. This yes. is based on future inflation as well. How do I yes. do that, Holly? Property. I go buy 10 freaking houses. Yes. That's it. And you let them appreciate. You let the debts pay down. There, There's your thing. You could buy 10. I'm not exaggerating. How many people in, my, in here have bought more than 10 houses using creative finance in the last couple of years? You're going to see even Elena Tang, I don't know if she's in here, but in her first 12 months inside of my community, she bought 20 houses. Never once did she call a seller. Never once. You got, you got um, uh, I think Carolyn Briley is in here. She bought 70 properties in her first 12 months inside of Sub2, 70 doors. That's what I want to do. I'm okay. hungry. I'm ready. Okay. So, you got to remember, this is your number, not 800,000. It's 5 million. How do I do that? Go get 10 properties. How fast can you do that? I would give you a goal of one property in the next 60 days. 
Woo, I'm excited. Okay. Okay. One property next 60 days, I would buy that sub two. And here's what I would do is I would keep that in your portfolio. How do I keep that in my portfolio with no money coming out of my pocket? Holly, I bring on a private money partner. Okay. Yes. Where do I find a private money partner? I'd already showed you in the side chat. Okay. Yeah. The other yeah. thing is I would also have another property that I go and fix and flip because you obviously have an obsession over fix and flips. I, I good, like good. a few things. Yeah. Fix and flip and then multifamily properties. Cool. So you should have one property as a fix and flip. Probably I would say in the next 10 to 15 days. Ooh, yes, sir. Holly, let me show you how easy this is. Okay. Watch that. Watch this. Okay. I'm going to, Holly, I'm going to take you off the screen. It's good talking to you. I'm going to show you one last thing. I'm going, to let my, I'm going to tell my wife what our plan is for the day. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you, Miss Laura, for your patience. Thank you, Pace. Thank you so much. All right. So check this out. You guys want to find a fix and flip? I'm going to tell you right now how easy it is to find a fix and flip right now. Okay. First and foremost, my wife made contact with a guy that sells 30 or 40 properties a stinking month that you just say, I need a deal to flip. He'll sell you one. 30 or 40 of them. You get 30 or 40 of those opportunities every single month. Check this out. I'll tell you how easy this is. You guys want an opportunity to flip a house? My wife, um, this is what she used to do for me before we had a gaggle of children. But let's go to Keegley.com. Okay. Go to Keegley.com. This is Jamil's company. This is a coal wholesaling company. Let's go to investing. I'm going to go to properties. Look how easy this is. By the way, there's a Keegley franchise in 130 markets. Look at this. Right now, these are houses available to flip right now. You can't see it again, Misty, because you're on an Android on your phone. This is everybody. Everybody, Can you all see this? Can everybody see this? Okay. See, Misty says, all the people say yes. If if 80, 90% of people say yes, that means that the 10% that say no have a problem with their stuff, not mine. Okay. So look at this. Look at these beat up old houses. Mountain View Drive in Mesa, Arizona. Call for call for access. More pictures. Here's the wholesale price, 327. My wife could spend literally just a whole day looking at and comping these deals. You, want, you guys want to get a fix and flip on her contract today? That's how easy this is. Look at all these properties. Look at all these properties are ready. We could buy one today. We could get a, a flip under contract today. Don't ever tell me you need till the end of the year to find a deal. I could keep scrolling. Should I keep scrolling? Should I keep scrolling? Should I keep scrolling? This is one market, one market. Do you know how many companies are out there like Keegley that have all these opportunities? Don't ever tell me you have a deal problem. It's BS. It's absolute BS. There's a website out there. There's a strategy. There's money. There's whatever right now. Okay. All right. So let's go through the game plan for the day. I'm going to let my wife take over here in just a couple of seconds. I'm going to give you guys, um, was that a good deviation, by the way? Did you guys appreciate that deviation for a little bit? Should we see if we can FaceTime Asher? You give a gender reveal. Okay, we'll do it later. We'll give you. We'll tell you guys the gender reveal tomorrow. We got We haven't told our boy, our our son Asher. We got to tell him before we tell you guys. We'll tell you guys that tomorrow. Okay. All right. So here's the game plan for the day. Okay. Game plan for the day. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the wholesale contract. We're gonna go through the assignment contract and the JV agreement. Like I said before, this is about $7,500. This is what it would cost you to go and recreate these on your own. Okay, so what do we always do? We always make sure we say thank you to people that help us out, save us money. Make sure you have an attitude of gratitude. Okay, next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little review. By the way, Holly was so grateful for you, babe. She told me that she's like, I called people, it was so great. I, it was so great to follow people her through step-by-step. Step. It was so awesome. Did anybody else do their homework? Who did their homework? We're gonna be reviewing it a little bit today because we're gonna do a review of what Laura talked about yesterday, okay? And then what we're gonna do is Laura's gonna go through um, maybe comping a few Keegley houses. You good to do that? 
So some of those houses on that website, I'll have my wife comp a few houses and she'll use our spreadsheet to see if it's a good deal or not. Okay, and then we'll give you that spreadsheet. That spreadsheet's about another $2,000, okay? Then the, ne the last thing is my wife is gonna go in and she's gonna go to Privy. For the people that don't have Privy, make sure you go to startwithprivy.com. And there's a discount code for PACE. Yes, I do get paid for this. I call it my sushi money. I take my wife to sushi with that money every single month, okay? So I do get paid for this. Thank goodness to Benson. Do um, you guys know what I do with that money? Does anybody want to know what I do with that money? I'll, I will tell you what I do with that money. I give um, Carly a bonus. Every single month when we do the elephant challenge, the money goes to Carly. Carly gets a bonus for doing the elephant challenge, okay? Do we appreciate all of what Carly does behind the scenes? This is why I give her the money. Okay, I invest back into you guys with that money. All right, so this is the, the game plan for the day. You good with this, babe? Okay, I've got a, I have to leave in 36 minutes. I, so I'll, I'll pass the reins over to you, but I have to be on a bigger pockets uh, thing. Okay, there you go. All right, so let's do this first. Let's go. I think Carly gave me the um, links to the new updated contracts. Let's just double check. All right. That's the wholesale contract. Let's double check and make sure this is the right one. Okay, that's assignment. Joint venture. I don't think she have you have the contract in here. Let me go and do this. All right, give me a second, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna share this with you guys, and we're gonna go through the updated wholesale contract, and I will walk through with you guys and tell you why these wholesale contracts are so important. Okay, and the the reason why we may make them the way we make them. All right, let's. Turn the chat off. I'll drop this in the side chat for everybody. All right, here is the Dropbox link to the document that I'm going to share right now. Dropbox link is in the side chat. For people watching this on YouTube, I don't know what to tell you. I told you guys about this a long time ago. Y'all knuckleheads over there hanging out on YouTube. You know what? I'll go to YouTube. We'll, we'll give this to you guys. Hold on a second. Let's give you guys this. Uh, it's so weird. Why would this not give me a side chat? Let's figure this out. Interesting. That's really dumb. Sorry, guys. I don't know what to tell you. If you're on YouTube, you, uh, you're, you, you're SOL. Go to elephantchallenge.info. If you're on YouTube, just go to elephantchallenge.info and come into the Zoom because we'll, we'll show you all this stuff. And the Dropbox link for this contract is in the side. All right? All righty. Where is that deal? There it is. All right, here's the wholesale contract. This is the contract that we're going to go through for just a minute. This is a contract that you guys will use when you are going out and submitting offers on properties direct to seller. You guys are gonna be working with this contract. This contract works, guess how many states? Look in the side chat, I'll tell you how many states this works in. There's the answer. Works in all 50 states. We've used this in all 50 states. It's legal in all 50 states, works in all 50 states. Okay, it's really simple. You're gonna put the property address in here when you're working with the seller. The APN, I never put the APN in. My wife will tell you otherwise. I never put the APN. I let somebody else on my team do that. The APN is basically the assessor's parcel number, okay? It is how to know 100% we're talking about the right property. Earnest money, this is why I brought in the gators into this challenge is because you guys will need earnest money for these deals. And if you don't have earnest money, this is why you need a gator. 
As you can see, IG at Jen, the closer in the Zoom chat, she says, I'm a gator. I can define your deal. So anybody that's a gator, they're going to tell you they can give you the money to put down on a deposit on these houses, okay? They'll JV with you, joint venture. Purchase price, close of escrow, escrow agent. If you don't have an escrow agent, um, what I would do is ask the sub two community who they're using and then fill this in. And there you go. Here's the seller's information. This is the seller you're buying the house from. This is the buyer. That would be you or maybe your end buyer, depending on how you structure it. Inspection period standard is 10 days. So you typically put 10 days in there. We change this around a lot. Okay. If you need additional training on this, I'm like, why? And oh my gosh, I need more information on this. This is why I brought in my sub two community. They can help you out with this. Okay. Um, obviously you got to have buyer and seller signatures or uh, initials on each page. Um, here's a couple of things for you guys. This one is one of the re most important phrases in this entire contract. I wrote this. This is specifically to protect gators from losing their earnest money deposit. So make sure you guys read that part. This one is boilerplate, boring. You don't need to know anything about it. Stupid. Status of title, stupid. A inspection and access to the property. This one's really important for wholesaling. You want to make sure that your buyer has access to the property. As you guys can see on Keegley, Keegley will say, call for access. Well, how are you going to get access to this property if it doesn't state in the contract that you will have the ability to have access to the property from the seller anytime you need to? So this is very important. Lead paint, I don't know, why, why do we care about lead-based paint? Is that just like a state thing? All right. Got it. Okay, so uh, lead-based paint, I don't care about that. I never even read that out to the seller. As is purchase conditioning, uh, condition of the uh, property's close of escrow. Okay, great, 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 great. I don't care about any of that stuff. Here's the most important part I care about. Okay, the most important part of this that I care about is down here. Where is that? There you go. Assignment. Buyer may assign this contract or any of its rights here under any person partnership, blah, 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 blah. Seller's consent to such assignment is not necessary or required. This one's really good too. Buyer's marketing of its contract interest. That means me, I can go and even throw the house on the MLS. This gives me the legal right to do so. This one's very important too. Memorandum of contract. This allows me to put a memorandum on a property. If you guys don't know what a memorandum is, type in Pace Morby memorandum on YouTube and it'll give you a whole, I think there's like an hour and a half long thing that teaches you what a memorandum is. Memorandum of contract. Seller agrees that buyer may execute. No, da, 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 okay. These things are very important. This is the purchase contract and it's taken us years and years, multiple iterations to, to put this together. We have a blank page, blank five. Why would I have a blank page? Well, because from time to time on these blank pages, you can write in stuff like buyer will help the seller move. Buyer will help pack up boxes. Buyer will tow the, a vehicle. Buyer will give $4,000 to the seller's dog upon his passing. Like you can fill this in with anything you want. Okay. So there's the wholesale contract. Now, at some point you're going to get this seller under contract. Okay. You're going to get the seller under contract and you will end up saying, all right, I want to make money, right? Seller's under contract. Here's my seller. Here's the house. Here's me, Pace. And I get them into a contract. Here's my contract. I want to just sell that contract to another buyer. Okay, and I want to make an assignment fee or a finder's fee. You guys can call, I'm a finder. I'm a bird dog, okay? For all my bird dogs out here, I'm going to unleash the chat for a second. I want to see... How many of my bird dogs are in here that you guys um, are just in here to make a, a finder's fee? You just want to make 20,000, 10,000. Type in bird dog in the side chat. Okay, so we got a lot of bird dogs. Well, if I, get, if I use the contract that I just showed you right here, I am going to need another contract. And that contract is called an assignment contract that allows me to sell my contract to a buyer. That's an assignment contract. So you're gonna need two different contracts. So let's go back into the screen share and I will then walk you through the assignment contract very quickly.
This is the easiest contract ever. It's two pages. And all you're doing is this is between you and your buyer. Okay, let's give you that guys the link to this. I'm going to turn the side chat off for just a second so I can give you a link to the assignment contract. And by the way, Carly will email this to everybody at the end of the day, everybody that registered for the elephant challenge. We will make sure we email this all to you. Assignment of purchase contract and escrow instruction. So a signor is me. I'm the wholesaler. Okay. A signee is the person that's going to buy the, the contract from me. Okay. What's our purchase price? All the same stuff. Really basic stuff. A signee earnest money. So that means how much earnest money does my buyer need to put down? And then it basically just has one, two paragraphs talking about like, you just got to close. Close your damn job. This is it. Assignment contract. Two pages. Fill it out. Initial both pages, hand it over to the, to the title company, okay? And the title company and your transaction coordinator will actually work through and make sure that your buyer fulfills his obligations or her obligations to close on the deal. So that is the assignment contract. You will need both of these, okay? Both of these will be needed in order for you to get a deal done. Okay, if you are going to be a bird dog, you need both of those contracts. The con first one we talked about is between you and the seller. Okay, that's the purchase contract. Second one is between you and the buyer. Okay, and this in between right here, this in between is where you make that $20,000 finder's fee, that $12,000 finder's fee, that $30,000 finder's fee is that you have sold this contract right here for $20,000 more than what you got it for. Give me an emoji. Thumbs up, a heart, if you guys understand. Uh, yeah, my wife's like, don't you want to turn on the chat? I'm like, yeah, I do. But the problem is people don't click on the Google Drive link for like four minutes. They forget that I have a link in the side chat with all the, all the stuff, you know. I wish it was not the case, but it is the case. I've learned through doing this so many times that people take like 18 hours to be able to click on one of them links. All right, so next thing that we're gonna go through, this is incredibly important, is this is a joint venture agreement, okay? If you guys are gonna joint venture with each other, this will help you make a decision on how each party splits up the profits, who does what, what decisions are made, et cetera. Okay, look at this. Profit shall be allocated as this, as follows. And it is a Word document that we're going to give you guys. Okay. Let's see here. Let's see. Editor. Da, 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 da. You guys are going to have to download it. People with access can do what? What will it let me do? People with access can open the link. All right. Copy the link. Here we go. This is important. Never do a deal with another human being without a JV agreement. Okay, so when people are helping each other do the deal. Now, here's what I'm talking about with this. You're probably wondering like, wait, 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 wait. What do you mean joint venture, another person? What are you talking about? Here we go. Check this out. We got a seller. Seller lives in the house. I go and get a contract with this seller, right? Boom, boom, boom. Well, I might need one or two people to help me do that. One person comes to the table and goes, hey, I'm a sub two student and I know how to negotiate. So let me do the negotiating. You might have a gator that comes to the table that says, hey, I have the funding for the earnest money, the EMD. Therefore, you are in a three-way JV. Does that make sense? Everybody. I'm unleashing the chat. Does that make sense, everybody? why you need a JV agreement. Okay, if you are a baby elephant, you're one of the free people. Okay, you came in here and you are like, help me. Well, you're gonna get a couple people to come in and help you out. But they don't wanna do a deal with you unless there's a JV agreement that states this is the nature of our relationship. Okay. Pace, the link is blocked for us. Guys, it's not blocked. I showed you on a screen share. It is not blocked. You just have a lot of people trying to gain access to it. You got to wait, okay? I showed you on screen share that it is shared with anybody. Watch. See this? Check. 
Down, they can download it. Okay. Hey, Carly, are you here? Carly, you can can if you if you're here, can you pop up here for just a second? She's like crap. I was making a hot dog for myself. I was cut. I was cut. Were you make, busy making macaroni and cheese with hot dogs in it? No, I was not. I was. I was. I was looking at the Elephant Challenge community. Hi, Laura. Hi, Pace. Hi. Hi. No, I just. I, I just feel like a hot dog macaroni cheese thing right now. I don't know why. <laughs> um. Hey, Carly. Can you make sure we get all three of those yeah. documents? I think the one you don't have is the purchase contract. Yes. Okay, can you make sure we bundle those into a shareable Google Drive, like just one folder all together, and we email it out to everybody, please? Absolutely, you will. I will get that going. You guys will get it at the end of the day, and you guys will find it in the Elephant Challenge community under resources as Okay, well. awesome. Um, tell, tell Carly thank you. Carly, where are you at right now? Are you in Gig Harbor today? I'm in Boise right now. At I'm that house you just bought sub to? No, I ended up letting that one go. That was, there was a second lien on that, but I just picked up a sub two uh, trailer and wholesaled a house to somebody you introduced me to in Boise. So Are you serious? Dead serious. So you're not just doing elephant challenge stuff. You're actually doing the business. I'm doing the deals. Thanks to Pace and Laura and the whole community. Guys, did you know that Carly, Carly used to think I was a scam? <laughs> I didn't think you were a scam. I just thought you were teaching wholesaling and Alex joined your community. And I was like, we're not wholesalers, but you're not. Would you dis define me as only a wholesaler? Absolutely not there. You can't put pace in a box. Yeah. Don't put, don't put don't pace, put in, a box. pace in a box. <laughs> oh, you did? that's just one exit strategy. That's one thing, but definitely what do, not. what do I do exactly? You, you buy businesses, you teach us to buy businesses, you buy houses creatively, you buy cars creatively, you do multifamily, you do capital raising. I don't know. I can't think of everything. What do you not do? Is it easier? Or what do you not do is an easier thing to list? I don't relax. That's what you don't do. No, you don't. I'm the always on thing. it. I'm always on you it. Are. Um Dude, I'm so excited for your RV. Molly called me about it yesterday. She says there's a little hiccup in like one of the steps. She's like, I'm working through it, whatever. What RV are you buying creatively? Thank you. Oh, God, thank you for Molly. I, I felt so bad. I called Molly yesterday at the DMV and they're like yelling at me and she helped me a lot. I'm buying a trailer. It's not a sprinter van. I want the sprinter van still. Those are tough. Those are Sometimes hot. you just got to get, get some momentum and then get the next one. Yeah. It's not quite an Airstream trailer. I it's I'm working up there, but um can you still make I love in the it? foreclosure and then they were also in forbearance for their RV. So I I got it, the does the does the trailer is it big enough you and Alex can make more children or what's up? We're not we're done. We're yes, but we're I'm I'm, I'm, on I'm, I'm texting team. your husband right now. Me and Laura are on the same I'm with Laura on this. <laughs> You're done? I'm done. I'm so done. It's a lot. I know it's a lot. It's a lot. So, so your camp, your trailer, is it class C? It's a bumper toe. No. Oh, bumper toe. Bump. Okay. Bumper toe. Somebody I described this to me the other day. That means the vehicle actually drives the RV. They're, co they're combined. No, it's like yours. Oh, like mine. Okay. Cool. You have so a, tra truck, a travel and then you trailer. You put it onto the bumper and you tow it. Yeah, yeah they're, we call them travel trailers here in uh, Arizona. You guys call them bumper tow. Got it. I don't know what you call them. I don't know what to call them. You bought it sub two or seller finance? Sub two. It does. It's not possible, Carly. It is possible. It's, it's not illegal. Easy. It's illegal. It's not illegal. Thank God. Thank God you hooked me up with Molly and Allison on this. Molly, I know she's so busy, but she was my lifeline yesterday. So Molly gave me all the documents in sub two. If anybody's looking at sub two, you search for RV in this private sub two Facebook group. Molly has all the sub two documents for RVs and a video explaining how to do it. 
So thank God for sub. Don't tell people to join sub two. That they shouldn't join. They sub shouldn't. Two. But I'm all, just saying, if I you're watching and you are sub two, you shouldn't join. The you only thing the only thing we do in um sub two is wholesale guys. So don't don't join. We suck. It's only wholesale. Um, I'm glad you joined. What's funny is your husband joined, and I end up I ended up getting you on my team, and I get to hang out with you a lot more. And you didn't even want to hang out. You didn't want to join. This is so funny you didn't want to join but you and i become like really good friends well it's funny well alex joined without telling me he was up late at night watching all your youtube videos staying up late and then three months he's like oh and by the way um i spent all this money to join this sub two community three months ago he didn't even tell me and then i got to know i got to know you at clever i met you i got to meet laura and everyone and i'm like okay I, I see now. You're like, I get it. I get it. I get it now. And now we're homies. We are homies. I'm grateful for you in my life. You're you're a ray of sunshine that I needed in my life. Thank you. I'm grateful for you guys. Oh yeah, that my wife just says that sounds like a wife thing to do to not notice that amount of money gone for three months. <laughs> it does. He did on his <laughs> personal credit card that I don't have access to. He was sneaky. I love it. But it was, it's a very wife thing to do, Laura. Well, Pace keeps telling me, he was like, do you even know like anything about our finances? And I'm like, <laughs> dude, I can't keep up with you. You want me to keep up with you? I don't even know what you do during the day, you know? <laughs> I know. It's crazy. Anytime, anytime you want to know what's going on with our finances, you can, you can meet with Tony or you can meet with my family office. Yeah. They're available. Anytime. Yeah, you but want. you could find out if you wanted to with Tony, for sure. Yeah, you know how, you know how my wife finds out what I'm up to? Instagram. She goes to whereispace.com. <laughs> <laughs> or Laura. She's like, where is he? Oh, she's like, oh, this is where he's going. This is what he's doing. Oh, that's we have a good, funny. we have a, it's a, don't you, you like our relationship? Like you would rather, who would you rather be married to? No. You sure? Yeah. Everyone has their little quirks and stuff. And you just have to decide. Yeah. Like For sure. Like you like the random? Yeah, I was planning on you going to New Jersey. Uh, but by the way, we are leaving to Utah tomorrow. So I'm going to be hanging out in Utah for a week. And then we will be going up to Boise. And we'll be go hanging out in Montana for basically a month. So that'll be amazing. Um, okay, so Carly, you're going to bundle those together. I will. I'm going to give you the, um, let me give you the, the purchase contract. Because if you live in Boise, you actually say Boise. If you live That's out... Early. She says Boise because she doesn't. Well, actually, no. She says Boise because she knows that Boise is the right way to say it. I'm from Idaho. Boise, not Boise. No Z. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So, Carly, I'm going to send you the new, new contract for um, the wholesale purchase contract okay. that's Gator approved. Perfect. Okay. And I will make sure. Let's just put this all into a um, one document like an elephant making, challenge document or something making my life easy. You know, Thank you, you. May, you brighten everybody's day. Thank you. you know that? Well, I, I try. I tell everybody that she's a race. I think they get steal that uh, thing from me. Guys, give Carly a different compliment. Don't steal my compliments. Tell her, <laughs> say something nice to her. My compliment is that she's a ray of sunshine. You guys don't have to give me freaking thieves. I love helping you thieve thievery. <laughs> Okay, um, there's the Dropbox folder for the uh, new Gator contract, the Gator wholesale, a Gator approved wholesale contract. Got it. I got it. Okay, so we'll get that and the, uh, the other contracts I sent you. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so I'm out of here. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm going to let my wife take over. And what she's going to do today is we're going to, let me go through this one more time just with her so she, we can make sure. Are you done with me? I'm done with you. Thank you. You're okay. awesome. Bye guys. Thank you. Okay. So with this guys, we've got wholesale assignment JV. I showed you guys those. We're going to have um, Carly send that to you. Then Laura's going to review a little bit about what she did yesterday. And then what I think she should do is I think she should go on Keegley's website and comp a few houses. And I bet you could actually find a deal today that I could buy and flip. You think on Keegley's website? 
All right, let's look at I'll, I'll let her do that. You guys want her to teach you guys how to she comps and does some stuff? All right, cool. Um, I'll leave that there. Let me. Yeah, whatever, whatever you feel comf confident doing. You, you feel whatever. Now, um, okay, so that just show people like on the spreadsheet, hey, let's reverse engineer and see if this is a good deal for Pace. This is how Pace um, gets his capital. He's paying 12% or he's doing this or he's doing whatever. And um, let's see, where do I want that right here? So what I would do is have that go through the spreadsheet and then um, go back to Privy and let's show them, hey, let's start looking for deals at the very end. And we'll give them some scripts for reaching out to agents and saying, hey, I saw this deal, da, 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 da. And then we'll give them homework to make sure, one, they've signed up for Privy. Two, they download and read through the documents. That's the second piece of homework. Number three, they um, go through and they, maybe they comp a couple of properties and that's their homework. And then tomorrow we'll call um, agents again. Okay. You have an hour and 12 minutes. You can take as much time as you feel confident doing. You do whatever you want. You're, and you have a babysitter today, so you got to do what you want. Um, so, guys, give it up for my wife, Laura Morby, please. Tell her how much you appreciate her. The more um, gratitude you show people, the more likely they are to show up again in the future. Okay. Now, my sub two community gets to hang out with her a lot more frequently. Today is a special treat for you guys. So, uh, appreciate you guys. I'm going to go hang out with Bigger Pockets. I've got this commitment I made to them. Um, so, I'll see you guys later. And I'll see you guys. Actually, I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Okay. Hi, everybody. Now you all can hear me. You want that chair? Will you check on the Bonnies? Thanks. Sorry, I have um, anxiety about my babies. I know they're fine. They're with Delaney. If anyone's met Delaney, she's super sweet and she's great, but I'm just a nervous. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm, I'm, this is so close. Interesting. All right. I always mess with Pace's setup and I'm going to get in trouble. Um, happy to be here. Um, we're going to go find some deals. So let's do that. So he wants me to look on Keegley. Um, I will tell you guys something though. Let me get my ugly mug off the face off this screen real quick. So this is something that's always going to be true. And I always try to um, highly, highly, highly recommend this. Um, so if you can think about what it would take to submit a property to a website and get the website to, you know, update itself. They've had this house on Carrie Lane um, for a while and Keegley, if you do what I tell you to do with a Keegley or whoever is in your market, um, Easy Homes Inc. Rob Binkley last night, he does something very similar. He has a website very similar to this. Um, he actually said it last night when we were on the phone. So if anyone was in here, you'll have noticed what he said. But he said by the time a property has hit, like we sell so many that don't even hit the website. And that's because they have a pool of buyers that they know will buy and when they get a property come across their desk they're texting or they're calling and saying hey i know you were looking for you know a three bedroom two bathroom that was under 350 i just got one do you want it and so a lot of the good ones will have been snagged already before they end up on the website so i want to show we're going to comp one from the website and then i'm going to text somebody from keegley so no matter where you guys are, even if you're not in Phoenix, again, Keegley is in 130 different markets. Also, there are a ton of companies just like Keegley. We just love Keegley and um, they're such a great company to work with. But I highly recommend that you make a contact at these wholesale dis dispo companies and you reach out to them and you say, hey, I'm serious. I want to buy a property in the next 60 days like this would be for Holly. I'm looking to you know buy a property in 60 days to flip and so i need you know if you see something text me and once they text you you have to actually respond because sometimes i'll be in the shower and ronald from keegley is hey laura i just saw this and i thought about you and i'm like 
I'm in the shower and then I'm, you know, forgetting about it once I get out of the shower because I've got a bunch of stuff going on and then I don't respond for two hours. So when you make these relationships with these people, you want to make sure that you're jumping on it and you're looking at it. And even if you don't like it, you're giving them some positive feedback. So does that make sense? Why maybe the stuff on the website might not be a good deal? It's kind of like their stale stuff that no one wanted, no one jumped on. And so now they took the time to put it on the website. So we're going to do one on the website first, and then we're going to text Ronald and we'll see what he sends us. So let's uh, take a look at this boy real quick. Let's see if we should probably just do Carrie Lane because this was more than likely like one of the most recent ones that they purchased. So it's that 19486 North Carrie Lane in Maricopa. Um, so let's click on it and see what it looks like. More pictures. So it's a three bedroom, two bath, two car garage, stucco tile roof. Looks like in, it's in a normal HOA community, you know, 2004. And it looks like the seller wants to stay there for seven days post close of escrow, which is fine. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so this is just people's stuff. A lot of times you have to like look past people's stuff. So um, more than likely, like just because we've done this for so long, they're probably going to leave behind some of this, whether it's trash or whatever. All of this is done, um, you know, as is. And so these people aren't overly concerned with doing like the most spectacular move out job. Maybe they're sick of running to Goodwill to donate. Maybe they're sick of running to the dump to throw stuff away. Maybe they hate their couch and they're just going to leave it behind because it's covered in dog hair um, and they don't want to load it up. They don't want to set it out for bulk pickup. So I'm going to assume that they're probably going to leave some stuff behind, but it is important to not notice their stuff because you can assume that maybe you're going to have to pay some money to, for dump fees to get rid of trash. But, you know, what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the walls. I'm looking at the flooring. You know, I'm looking at the ceiling. Um, you know, there's no can lights in here. There's one fan. The fan is that super cheap 90s white fan. Um, there's no popcorn on the ceiling. Um, they've got some really old carpet. That is so interesting. I can't tell what that is. Let me zoom in a little bit because I'm sure it's a little... I can't tell if that's wallpaper. It's got to be wallpaper, right? I highly doubt someone painted something like that. So they've got, you know, a tile on their sink, but it's like that old brown style that was pro popular in the early 2000s. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm trying to see past. Um, this is, uh, what's it called? So the reason why I'm spending so much time looking at it is I'm going to have to estimate how much it would be to fix it up. Um, looks like they've got some, that's probably laminate because it goes through the kitchen and that's a wet area. Um, they've got a different kind of tile that looks like every little girl's dream with those squishy mows. Um, okay, i got cabinets, the old oak. They've got that old cultured marble. Just a normal shower surround, it actually doesn't look bad. Okay, In the backyard, looks like an older AC unit. No grass or anything, overgrown trees. Okay, so that's good. So now I know about what it looks like and then I'm gonna wanna see what some of the properties in the area have looked like and sold for and what's been done to them, right? So we can do that on Privy or we can do that on MLS. Do you guys want to vote either way that you want me to go? I can go a little bit more of a deep dive if we do it on MLS or we can do it on Privy. Looks like the majority of people want me to do it on Privy. Perfect. Okay, let's do Privy. Let's log in. All right. Make sure I log in. Oh, Pace made this so big. Pace is so much better at MLS, or not MLS, at um, Zoom than I am. So sometimes I just feel like I'm way out of pocket with this. All right. All right. 
Let me share my screen again. Okay, so this is what it looks like, of course, when you log in. And I'm going to type in the property that we were just looking at. So I just copied and pasted it. So here it is. So um, they don't have bedrooms, bathrooms, anything like that, but they do have that it was built in 2004, 1526 square feet. So I wanna kind of get an idea of what some of you know the comparable homes have sold for in the area and with comping i'm going to get into my comping rules in just a second but i'm going to touch on just a few so you don't ever want to cross any sort of major highways or major roads so we want to cross this garvey street we want to cross the john wayne parkway and we would ideally like to stay within the neighborhood so we want to kind of get a good idea of what's going on. So you can already see right here that, you know, we've got a 319, a 320, you know, 315, 330. Let's see this 330. Three bedroom, two bathroom, 14, 20. Let's see, 1526. Ours is 1526. And this one is... 1503 so that's actually really good and this one's sold so let's look at it and see what they did on the inside okay so this is really interesting and this is one of those things that when you're thinking about um, estimating a renovation which is something we're going to have to do when we're comping it is if you look at this it's got yellow paint it's got the builder baseboards they switched out the fan to something a little bit more modern, but that's still probably about less than a hundred dollar ceiling fan. They've got two separate flooring types in here. Um, you know, it's clean. There's nothing in it. It's got, you know, blinds, but you don't have to think that, Hey, I'm going to have to rip out the floor and do some super nice luxury vinyl plank flooring. The appliances are mismatched. You know, this one does have a pool. So that does matter. So, but this is good to know that we don't really have to do a whole lot to get a good price. So there's one, let's look at the 320. This is actually on the same street, 1528 square feet. Ours is 1526, I believe. So this should be a model match and it sold for 320. So let's see what it looks like. This is one of the reasons why I picked this one on carry from the Keegley list is just because I was like, oh, 100%, it's going to be easy to comp this thing. So again, like the flooring, like no one would pick this in their house today. They've got the old oak cabinets. This is not granite. This is um, just like a laminate countertop. They've got an above mount sink. The, this house does have all the appliances. They do look like they match. Um, Carpet, just basic, you know, nothing special. It's clean. They left the plastic shower surrounds, updated their fans, but it's like no one had to go in, do new countertops. No one had to do, go in and, you know, paint the cabinets. No one had to switch out all the floors. It's just clean, you know? So let's see. Looks great. So... This is where we're going to get into the fix and flip cal cal calculator that Pace showed you briefly yesterday and how he was saying, hey, when someone buys a house and they sell it for this, you know, what are they making? And he said everyone was wrong. And I'm going to show you why everyone's wrong. It's because there's a lot more to it than just, you know, this. So let me pull up my fix and flip calculator. There's a bunch of costs that go into it that, you know, you've got holding costs, you've got um, homeowners insurance, you have HOA payments, you've got utility payments, you've got a bunch of stuff going on and it is a little bit more involved. So let me share my screen again with you all. And again, I'm going to assume that this one is not a deal. So don't be disappointed that it's not a deal. I already pretty much know it's not gonna be a deal, but just, in case anyone gets through this flip calculator and you're like, dang, this is a crappy deal, you know? Oops. 
All right. So Keegley is selling this. What are you selling it to us for? Two sixty nine nine ninety. All right. And someone might think, especially if you're new, Pace is calling you baby gators. That's really funny. But um, some of you might be like, oh, well, some of these are selling for three twenty. That's great. You're going to make 50 grand. So let's get into it. So this again is going to be an easy renovation. We're going to have to clean it up, probably do new carpet, a couple new fixtures, um, some repairs here and there, but we're not going to go crazy on the, on the remodel. So let's just plan on owning it. We're probably going to own it for two months, but let's just say three. Um, oh, sorry. I put my estimated ARV. Let's put 320. Sorry. And then the purchase price to Keegley is 269990 Okay, so when you're buying a house as is um, from a seller, you're typically paying all of the closing costs. So that's all the title and escrow fees. 2% is probably a little bit high, but it's better to, you know, overestimate than anything else. Um, I will share this with you guys too. Um, I'm picky on the sheet. There's so many ways you can mess up the formulas. And so I have a shareable one. So I will send it to you guys. So for repairs, let's go back and look at pictures. We're definitely going to have to do yard cleanup. Let's just say that's three grand. It looks like we do need a new AC unit. That's five. I'm not going to get too specific on stuff. Let's say we have to do some trash out. These people loved wallpaper. I don't know why. We're going to have to do wallpaper. I probably would paint this house. I would do new carpet just because you can see that there's carpet in these high traffic areas. Um, there's carpet in hallways. Like that's always going to be mushed and squished down. Um, I'm not going to change out anything in the kitchen. It looks like the kitchen has all black appliances. As long as they work, we're going to be fine. I'd be more concerned with them, the new buyer having a really good AC unit than anything else. Um, we're going to do all new fixtures like ceiling fans and stuff like that. Um, I don't think we had to add any like can lights or anything. Let me check this comp because this builder really just didn't think that was necessary. So yeah, there's, they've got the cans in the kitchen, but they don't have anything here. Let me check the bedrooms and make sure you guys don't hear or see anything. Leave and come back usually fixes black screen. I see. I do. Okay, perfect. All right. Sorry, there was a few people who were saying they couldn't see and I got nervous. So I don't have to add can lights. I'm not going to do anything like major electrical. I'm just going to get a new fan, a new chandelier. The kitchen has, you know, everything's going to be fine. So this isn't going to cost too much money. I would say 30, 35 grand maybe. I'm going to overestimate a little bit because always when you get into a house, you never know. You can end up having to do a new hot water heater, more extensive roof repairs, stuff like that. So now this is important um, for my buy box sheet that I shared with you guys um, yesterday. Um, it had a question for a buyer in there where it said, how are you financing this? So the reason why we're asking that is because if somebody's paying cash for a property, like an investor, a fix and flipper, They'll, they will make way more money because they don't have holding costs. Um, as far as like someone who is getting a hard money loan, like if you look right here, if you keep the house for three months, they're paying $8,500 in holding costs. So um, I'm going to say that we're going to borrow, you know, 100% of the purchase price, the two sixty nine nine ninety, which is usually what hard money lenders will do. And let's see, it's at 10%. Um, 12% is probably more accurate. So let's do 12%. And then we need to know the property taxes. This is Pinnell County. So I'm just going to look that up real quick. Sorry, should have logged into my crap earlier. I bet that I changed my MLS password. MLS is really goofy, and it makes you change your password all the time. And it's really annoying because you can't use any past passwords. And so you start trying to get real creative after you've had your license for 15 years. So give me a second while I look up what I just did. Last modified 48. There we go. 
Oh no. I let Apple choose for me, you guys. How, how silly. This is gonna take me a while to type this out. You guys let Apple choose your passwords, like choose a strong password, because every time I do, it just really gets ya. I'm probably gonna have typed it wrong. Oh, there you guys go, there's my password. Wow, what a dummy. Well, now you guys know my MLS password. Have fun in there, it is actually super fun. Oh no, it's saying I did it wrong. Okay, let's see, let's do it one more time. If it doesn't work, then we'll just estimate property taxes until I can get this done. Okay, I'm not gonna lock myself out of my MLS, so um, let's just estimate property taxes. There's no way property taxes are gonna be that much. Let's just say they're 1200 bucks. Actually, I could log on on my phone. Sorry, you guys. Yesterday, I walked in Pace's studio early because he was in the theater room, and I made sure I was logged into all my programs before this started, so I apologize. Let's just say it's 1200 bucks. Okay, homeowner's insurance, about 100, 100, 120 bucks probably a month is probably more accurate. Utilities, we are buying this in the summer, so we wanna make sure that we keep the air on. So some people will be like, well, I'm not gonna spend that much money on utilities. Believe me, you want people to, when they're looking at your house, to wanna stay in your house. So if you're not gonna spend the money to keep the air conditioning at a decent level in the summer, like you're gonna have an agent come in with their buyer who might have kids. And if it's hot, they're gonna to wanna to get out of your house quickly. Like, let's look at it as fast as we can. Oh my gosh, everyone's hot. Everyone's about to pass away. Like, let's get out of this house. You're gonna have a hard time selling your house. So we wanna make sure that we pay for utilities and get, you know, get the air conditioning on. So this, these are all costs that are getting eaten out of your profit margin. So then when you go to sell the house, you're gonna to have to take pictures of it and you don't wanna go with your stinking camera so that we have to ha laugh at bad MLS pictures on Facebook. You know, people always posting funny pictures of these crappy MLS photos, but you know, you don't wanna do it yourself and show up in the mirror. I should actually look up at bad MLS photos just cause it's so funny, but it's like people take the, the pictures of the stupidest stuff Oh, there's grandma. You know, you don't want to go down, down there and take pictures yourself. Like, oh my gosh, these aren't even that bad, but there, there's some really bad ones. And I see them in real life too, where you're just like, what are you guys doing? You know, oh, there's a kid. <laughs> see, so you don't want to do stuff like that. So just hire a photographer. It's cheap. It's hundred bucks. You know, doesn't matter what your market you're in. There's always going to be a real estate photographer. that will go over there for about a hundred bucks. Now this is important. We're estimating 2% for this. It might be more, but this is a pretty decent thing to say. So closing costs. So once you go to sell the house, you have to hire an escrow agent again, you know, do title and escrow again. Um, you might have to give the buyer money, especially now um, with interest rates being as quote unquote high as they are. Obviously they're not historically super high, but um, you have to sometimes give your buyer money for them to buy down their interest rate. So buy down points and then your, your um, inspection repairs, so your home inspection repairs. So every end retail buyer is not going to be buying your house as is. Sometimes you can negotiate that, but it's rare for an end buyer who's actually going to live there. Um, so they'll have a home inspector come in, they'll look at everything and you'll have to fix stuff. So that's something that you have to take into consideration. And then you're gonna pay 3% to listing agent, 3% to the selling agent. So let's just change this to 1% because I'm gonna list it and I, I won't even charge 3,200 bucks. I'll charge 1,200 bucks. Okay, so if we bought this house, we would lose $18,408.49. So that's not a good deal. And some of you may be like, how did that happen? Like, how did we go from 270,000 essentially to 320,000? How is that not a good deal? And Pace has talked about a couple of times when wholesalers are like, cause I've actually had to turn down deals from wholesalers who send it to me. Like someone will send this to me and they'll be like, wow, you're so greedy. You won't take a $50,000 check. And it's like, wow, you didn't even assume that I was even gonna put a dollar into renovation. 
You didn't assume that it was going to cost me any money to buy the house. You didn't assume that I, well, I wasn't going to get homeowner's insurance, you know, like we've had fix and flips where um, someone will come back like a tenant who had to move out and like literally burn the house down or purposely flood the house like that happens a lot. So why would you not have homeowner's insurance, you know, so it's like the wholesalers who have never done it before her trying to sell a deal, you'll be like, but you're going to make so much money and you're going to turn this down. Yes, you're really greedy. And it's like, no, if I took this deal, I'd lose 20 grand. Like on a good day, like what if something bad happens? What if, you know, we discover there's foundation issues? So um, this one is not a good deal. And I had a feeling it wouldn't be a good deal. But what I would like to do instead is text Ronald at Keegley instead and see if he has something fresh that he can send us. So I'm going to text him right now. And again, I that's why I recommend that all of you have a relationship with the wholesaler or the dispo company like Keegley, where you call and you can be able to text somebody and say, hey, I'm sitting down in a few minutes. Do you have anything hot and fresh um, that I can take a look at? I'm literally going to say that. Like this is a cinnamon roll or something. <laughs> but I want like a hot, I want a hot and fresh cinnamon roll deal. I don't want something that made it to the website because everyone already passed over it, you know? Um, yeah, we'll get the comp sh or flip or comping sheet to you all as well. So I want to show you guys a little bit of my comping rules. I know I only have like 40 minutes left, but I really glossed over some of the comping. And last night, Pace said, hey, once you contact your buyer, it's a good idea to just ask them, hey, I found this house on Cary Lane. What would you pay for it? And they'll give you a number. So um, let's just like fart around with this for a second. So say I sent Cary Lane to um, Rob and I don't know how to comp. And I just said, hey, what would you pay for this? So he's probably going to estimate like a 320 reno too, maybe a little bit less because he's going to be conservative. He might say, let's see if 230 would do it. Okay, so two, if he bought the house for 230, that he would have it like a 10% return. Um, so that's decent, you know, but Keegley's selling it for 270. That's 40 grand. And maybe... The reason why they're share, they're um, selling it for so much is because this is one of the things that kind of stinks for these deals is you, the negotiations already happened with the seller. And then obviously someone got the seller under contract. They're trying to make money. And then Keegley's trying to make money. And that's maybe where the 40 grand is coming in. Maybe the seller is under contract for 230. We don't know. Um, but it's not our responsibility to get involved in that. Either it's a good deal or not. And this one, in this case, it's not for a fix and flip. Could it be potentially a good deal for something else like buying it creatively? Yeah, but we didn't negotiate with the seller, so we don't know. Um, so I am going to go back and I'm gonna run through some um, comping um, rules with you guys, if that's okay. If you are interested in comping and you don't want to reach out to Rob and say, or your cash buyer that you made a connection with, um, if you want to comp yourself, I would love to teach you all how to comp, but um, it's a lot more, you know, um, involved than this. So I'm just gonna run through these. We're not gonna get like too deep into them um, because I still wanna try to find a good deal um, but I would love to teach you all too. So let me share my screen. Now I will say um, for um, comping. So Jamil does comping on straight out of comp, comping, comping, like straight out of Compton. He and Emily will do it. Um, everyone comps differently. So just because I comp a certain way and you don't do it this way doesn't mean that I'm right and you're wrong. It doesn't mean that, you know, Jamil's right and I'm wrong. Like everyone does it differently. There is a human element to comping. So with this, like th this is really bad. I'm going to stop sharing real quick so no one gets ahead of me. But um, 
sometimes wholesalers who actually know how to comp will get like, you can actually like manipulate comps. You can choose to ignore homes that are beautiful and are renovated and have sold for a much lower price and just only choose to showcase the two or three that sold for way more or show the one outlier that's for some unknown reason sold for 360 grand instead of 320 grand. Um, so you can, um, I wouldn't say you can tweak comps much like you can tweak any data you can tweak your comps so um but when you're looking for an investment property either for yourself or for your buyer and you're trying to comp it the proper way you want to do it as accurate as possible you don't want to tweak them to make something seem like a better deal than what it is because for rob if i found a deal for rob and i was trying to show it to him he's going to underwrite it himself as well before he says yes as anyone intelligent would do and he's going to want to look at stuff from somebody who doesn't bs him so you want to make sure that you are doing it as accurately as possible um to where the person rob doesn't get an email from me because that's how he said he wanted to be communicated to and he says um yeah, this is crap. He gets another one for me. Yep, this is a crap deal. He gets another one for me. Yep, that's a crap deal. That's a really easy way for him to get the fourth email from me and be like, you know, I'm not going to look at this for two hours, if at all, because clearly she doesn't know what she's talking about or she's trying to get me to buy crappy houses that aren't deals. Like, why do I keep wasting my time? You're going to borrow, bother your cash buyer. You want to make sure it's actually a good deal. So let's go through these really quick. And then I'll answer some questions and then we'll see what Ronald has, has sent me. I don't think he sent me anything yet, but we will see if he's sent me something. All right. So comping rules, my number one rule, as always, I'm going to have it in, in column A and column B, I'm going to have, um, some modifications because all the time you will get someone in a comping class who has this one random property that's like a five acre horse property in the middle of a town with no horse properties. And you know, you've got someone who's super loud, like, I can't figure this out. I can't figure this out. I can't figure this out. And it's like, so and then everyone thinks that every property is super hard to comp. How easy was Carrie Lane to comp? It was so easy. It was so easy to find recently closed houses that look like, literally almost the same exact house I, it probably like to two two square feet away from 1526 to 1528 three bedroom two bathroom two car garage literally on the same street that was so easy to find a couple to look at like it's really not that hard but when you teach comping you get people who are stumped on one particular property and so they need an answer to it and they want to talk about it so there is modifications, but you don't use your modifications until you can't find anything in column A. So, and yes, you can definitely get these rules. So the number one thing that I like to start with is I look, like to look in the neighborhood. And the reason why I like to look in the neighborhood is for things like this, 19486 to 19528, probably on the same street within a couple houses of each other. like. This is more than likely the same builder. It's built within two years of each other. The outside is going to look the most similar. The inside is going to look the most similar. The neighborhood has the same like amenities. They've got this green belt. The sidewalks look the same. The yards look the same. That's really, 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 really easy to remember like, hey, like when you're comping, you're just looking for like for like. So if you're sticking in the same neighborhood, you're gonna find really similar properties. If not a model match, a model match is like the gold standard because when you go to sell the house or refi or like any sort of valuation, an appraiser is a thousand percent going to use a model match just because it's the perfect house. No matter exactly what it looks like, they'll make some modifications for the condition or pool versus no pool. But if you can find a model match for the same exact house, you should definitely use that as a comp. Now, if you can't find a model match, but you find something that's similar. So Carrie Lane, let me go back to the kitchen so I can show you. So this one has the kitchen on the right 
and this is not how you get to out to the backyard but this one which is again very 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 similar has the kitchen pushed back more onto the interior of the house so it's not over here so it's like how like is this a flip of the house is it an exact model match i don't know um but it's pretty dang similar so i still want to stay in the neighborhood because i still want to see stuff like this now if you can't find any houses that are comparable in the neighborhood then you can go a maximum of two and a half miles out but i like to start with going a mile out, like a little radius search. So the subject property and you go one mile out. Now you wanna, don't ever wanna go more than two and a half miles out to find a comparable because an appraiser will never go two and a half miles out. Now when you're dealing with a small town with not a lot of sales going on and some really unique properties, you might want to go out 10 miles or something like that, but you have to be really careful because more than likely, this goes into the never, you don't wanna cross any major streets, highways, or water. Um, now, if you know your subject property more, you might be able to know that, hey, north of this street is a completely different type of house than south of this street is a little bit more of a rough area. Um, but that would have to come from market awareness. And sometimes we're comping stuff that we just don't know the area perfectly. But if you make sure you don't ever cross any major streets, highways or water, you're usually doing a good job. So that's the first rule. Railroad tracks also, yes, a thousand percent. So then you're gonna wanna look at what is a comp? This is, I guess, a really good thing to say. So um, a a comparable property has to be closed, like not pending, not contingent on selling, and then it's gonna close, like it actually has to close. And the reason why it has to be closed is because there's so much that can happen. So even though it's pending, so say um, this $320,000 house that we looked at that's on Cary Lane, like our subject house, say it was under contract for 320. That doesn't mean it's gonna close for 320. What if the appraisal comes in low and then they end up closing for 310? What if, you know, during the home inspection, they figured out that there is a big, huge roof issue and the seller then negotiates a lower purchase price? Um, that is something that will change the end, what it actually closes and records for. So a comp has to be closed and recorded. Sometimes I'll get wholesalers that send me pending houses and you are like, seriously, like how this, is it actually closed? I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know if for sure it's going to be something good. You know, closing for $10,000 less, like just assume, that um you know i'm planning on this 320 price let me change this back to 269 990 which is the price of keegley say i was counting on this house wasn't closed but it was pending at 320 it is but just for the sake of this say that something happened during inspection it actually closed for 305. now instead of me planning on losing 18 grand now all of a sudden i'm losing thirty two thousand dollars so it's really important that you don't base a financial decision on any sort of pending or contingent homes. Now, why am I telling you to actually look at those though still? The reason why is depending on what's going on in the market, what's going on with interest rates, you don't, you, if you're not keeping up with the trends or you're a little bit confused for the market, you keep hearing weird stuff like, oh, the interest rates are up, but there's less supply. So there's still a ton of people that are demanding a house. So um, prices are pretty stagnant or prices are actually going up 10%. How you will know that is you'll be able to gauge the pulse of the market by looking at these coming soon, active, pending and contingent to see if you see any trends as far as pricing goes. If you have a $320,000 closed comp, but everything that's active and is pending is now 310, then you know that like more than likely the price is going down $10,000 and you just need to be aware that maybe the market is going down. And even though this house sold for 320 a couple months ago, you need to be careful because all your competition is now not listing at 320, they're listing at 310. 
So you want to be aware of the trends. The other reason why you want to look at these is you want to see, so for this one on Carrie, I'm sorry to keep referencing Carrie, but we did do a pretty decent deep dive. So Carrie didn't change out the floor. Maybe this is new carpet, maybe, but it's super basic carpet. Say that everything now, active pending and um, coming soon, has all the flooring switched out. Now you know that maybe I need to spend a little bit more money in this house and get all new flooring. So you just wanna be aware of like, what's my competition price-wise doing? And what's my competition doing for looks? Are they stepping up their game? Is this buyer now wanting new countertops in their kitchen? Um, so you wanna just be aware of the design trends and the price trends by looking at that. But do not use anything as a set in stone comparable a good number for what you can plan on getting if it's not closed and recorded. The other thing is you want to be really careful to not, um, sorry, everyone's really mad about Dana. Sorry. Where is Dana? Dana Jones. Is that who everyone's upset with? And upset is probably a strong word. Um, I think Dana, they don't want you to keep posting your info right now. So get her out. I don't know how to get anybody out. And I would feel too bad if that is, okay, Dana said, okay. So you just have to stop posting your info just right now. Okay, perfect. Oh, it's a guy. Sorry, Dana. I'm so sorry. There is, Dana is a, a man's name as well. So I apologize. Okay. Um, all right. Yes, absolutely. I'll get this to you guys for sure. All right. So for the close comps, you only want to go back three months. And the reason why you only want to go back three months. So what is it July now? So what was going on in the market after Christmas and in January isn't is, is just a completely different ball game than what was going on in April. April till now is more accurate of where we should be for pricing. Now, if you can't find anything, maybe you can go out six months, but I would be really careful about that because again, our market is changing a lot everywhere, all over the country. There's a lot of news and with the elections and with the stock market and interest rates, like there's a ton of stuff going on that you have to be really careful that you're not relying on a price from January in order for you to make a financial decision here in July. So try to stay closed within the last three months. Okay, now the third rule is a no brainer and there is no modification, none. You have to use the same property type. So with uh, Carrie Lane, Carrie Lane is very obviously a single family detached house. It has no common walls. Um, it doesn't touch its neighbor. And so I would, even if I found a condo, a really large condo that was 1500 square feet, and had the same bedrooms and bathrooms and looked about the same, I would never use a condo to compare to the single family house. So you wanna stay within the same property type. Now, I like to touch on condo versus townhome and why you don't wanna mix up the two, even though they pretty much look identical usually, unless the condo is apartment style, but a lot of condos and townhomes look exactly the same. And the difference between a condo and a townhome is a townhome usually will have like a teeny yard. So um, they'll have like a little patio or a backyard. And the rule with a townhome is with a townhome, you own the land that your house sits on, the little plot, the lot, if you will. Like everyone, every property has a lot. With a condo, you only own what's within the walls. All of the exterior space, including the exterior of the condo, is owned by the association. Um, Diane Greaves, or Graves actually brought up something really good as well, that condos and townhomes actually too will have a more strict HOA. Um, so that also affects the value. Like with a condo, um, HOAs will have completely different rules than a townhome, usually more strict, and also, condo HOA dues versus um, townhome HOA dues are more than likely gonna be a considerable amount higher because again, the condo not only takes care of common areas, they take care of everything on the exterior of their units. So all of the exterior of the, of the building, the roof, you know, 
that's a lot. So you have to pay more in monthly dues for that. So it's just a choice of lifestyle. I personally, even though a condo is more expensive in a lot of regards, I would much rather live in a townhome than a condo. But some people say you have a second home in Palm Beach, Florida, and you're of retirement age, maybe a condo is more appealing to you because you don't have to, you know, care about um, landscaping. You don't have the HOA sending you violations that you've got weeds or your trees too tall or something that can be seen in your backyard. So a condo to an empty nester retired couple that lives in Palm Beach for a couple months a year, they might want a condo there. So um, same property is important even when it comes down to townhomes versus condos, patio homes too, duplexes too. Just compare a patio home to a patio home. Don't compare a patio home to a townhome. Don't compare a patio home to a single family home. So there is no modifications or exceptions to this rule. It just is what it is. Now, I'm going to make a really bold statement, and I wanted to say this at the end, but I'm going to say it now. If you can't find any comps, and my rules still, you can't find anything, it's not a deal. If you can't comp it and there's no proof of concept, there's no numbers, and you're going to hopefully... <laughs> you know, make money, you're like making a financial investment decision on something where there are no comps. Like the town has no renovated comps. Why are you trying to buy a fix and flip in that town? It's just not a deal. Why? Like if, if you're trying to find a comp for a patio home and there just aren't any patio homes and they're like, if you're trying to force a deal to work, if you're trying to justify some price, it's not a deal. It's way easier to buy a house like Carrie, where you have, you can find a house that will tell you, hey, you're going to sell it for 320, than you living on a hope and a prayer. You can live on a hope and a prayer for other areas of your life. But that's also one of my big things is like, again, with these classes, if this was a class that wasn't just, this is a class that's so much more than comping, but say this was just a comping specific class where it's like, hey, come learn my rules and let's comp deals. You would have someone in the side chat who would be blowing it up, spamming it. Comp my house, comp my house, comp my house, comp my house. I can't figure it out. I can't figure it out. Where they're saying the same house and it's some, you know, teeny tiny town with properties that are like super far apart and there is no investor activity going on. You know, it would be like looking in privy. Sorry, let me get out of here and go back and just show you what I'm I'm talking about. But it would be like, you know, someone like Pace was talking about South Dakota yesterday, but it would be like, hey, let's look at some fix and flips. It would be like someone telling me, hey, I'm looking in Rapid City and it's just so hard or hot springs and you're like, yeah, because there's like nothing going on here. Like there, it like the buyers here don't care for fix and flips. And so they would just be like, I can't find anything. There just isn't any comps. And it's like, yeah, because this isn't a good, you know, place to be looking right now. It just isn't a good spot. Why don't you go to the next major area and maybe look up here? Or why don't you do it virtually in a different market? So um, believing in your town is, Gloria, is a wonderful thing to do. I personally, I mean, some of you have been to my house. We live in Mesa, Arizona. If you hear anything about Mesa, Arizona on the internet, people will probably make fun of Mesa, Arizona. It was had notoriously horrible politics. And so Mesa needs help, <laughs> to say the least. But I will not let Mesa die. So Gloria, just like you, where you said, I, it's because I want to make my town bigger replace bigger with better, or I believe in it, or I love it, or whatever. But also, if you're trying to make money, like this isn't charity. Like if you if you make so much money that you just really believe in your hometown, Gloria, then go for it and start flipping and renovating houses and trying to attract people there. But it's so much more than having a beautiful home to live in. It's lifestyle. It's are there any good restaurants? Is there anything to do in the town? Is it safe? Do they have good school districts? So it's like one of those things where it's like, I love that you said that, 
and I understand, but that's not an, a reason to invest in in your in that area. I'm not saying you shouldn't invest in your community in other ways. Maybe you support small businesses. Maybe you continue to pay your property taxes to help improve you know, your local facilities and stuff like that. Maybe you get involved in some charity work with some of the youth, but if you're trying to flip a house and there's no comps, like just don't, it's not a deal. If you're trying to tell me this is a deal, it's not a deal. And that's really rude. We're a football town. But see, there's a lot of wonderful things. I mean, I could talk about Mesa, like the other day I was pushing my kids. This was a couple months ago, but I was pushing them. I picked an orange off my tree. I peeled it. We were eating it. We were just walking around. I was smelling orange blossoms. And I just spent so much of my childhood. Like I used to walk around and press my toes into the black asphalt on the street. And it was so hot. It like melted. It became like gooey and like making like little toe prints. And I don't know what my feet were made out of. They must be made out of leather. And I remember getting thirsty and climbing an orange tree and busting out an orange because it's Arizona. It's like hundred and bajillion degrees here. I didn't get oranges. I didn't get a glass of water. And then I remember getting on like my little bike and hopping from friend's house to another friend's house. And then I'm pushing my kids and I'm eating an orange with them and I'm smelling the same smells that I smelled when I was eight years old. And I just thought, what are the odds that I literally live on? I don't want to say the street that I live on, some of you have been to my house, but I live on a main street that I literally grew up on. I live on the same dang street. I grew up in an orange grove. I live in an orange grove. Like, that's so weird. That just shows you how much I love Mesa. So now as like a 36-year-old woman, I have now my two babies in a stroller and I'm smelling the same smells. So Gloria, I respect that. I love that. But if I'm trying to justify some house in Mesa that I feel, you know, I want to buy and but there's no comps. It's not a deal. All right, that was a really big tangent, but let's keep going. Uh, number four, you want to stay with the same bedrooms. Um, there is a teeny exception to this, but for the most part, if you're looking at a three bedroom house, you want to stick at looking at three bedroom closed comps. Um, the only exception to that is sometimes um, they'll have a den and um, a den is like a den or an office. So it's not like you're walking into a room and it's got a big archway. Those can, can be considered offices. I'm talking more like a den where it's a room with a door that you can close, but it does not have a closet. Um, so if I were looking at a three bedroom house that had a den, I would also look at four bedroom comps because it would be you know, 2000 to 2500 bucks to frame out a closet in that room. And now I have a four bedroom house. And so I'd want to see like what kind of value adding a bedroom might have. Um, because even if someone buys the house and they were like, dang, I really needed an office. Well, they can still use it as an office. It just now has an extra room, an extra closet. So um, for number five, the same number of bathrooms. There is no exception to this, and I'm pretty picky on this, and I'll explain why. So have any of you lived in a one bathroom house? And have you lived there with another person, whether it's a kid, a family member, a college roommate, whatever? How much of a difference in your life would it have made to have two bathrooms? Huge, right? Because like, think about it. When you have a one bathroom house, if you have like, say someone's um, going pee and you really have to go number two, there is no other bathroom. What are you going to do? Get in your car and go to McDonald's? What if someone's in the shower and you really have to go to the bathroom? Like, what if you're both getting ready for work at the same time? Say like a lot of us lived in one bathroom, you know, some things houses, apartments, whatever, when we were, you know, teenagers just left houses, you know, what if your roommate is getting ready for work and you got to get ready for work too? You have to like plan these things. You have to like wake up earlier than your roommate to make sure you can get a shower in. You start taking your hair and your makeup stuff and bringing it into your room because you need to be able to get ready and you can't like hold the bathroom hostage. So having an extra bathroom makes a huge difference. So there is no exceptions to this rule. Look at the same bathroom. The other thing too, has anyone lived in a three bedroom, two bathroom house with kids? 
probably a lot of us. For the majority of my adult life, I've lived in a three bedroom, two bathroom house and I had a son. And every single time someone came over and they were like, hey, can I use your bathroom? I would cringe a little bit because I don't want to send them to my primary bathroom where I might have underwear on the floor or something, or I might have left something out that is inappropriate. And they have to now with primary bedrooms, you have to walk through the person's actual bedroom where they sleep and they have sex and, you know, all the stuff. And now you have to walk through there to get to their room. So of course I'm sending them to the hall bath, which is also my son's bathroom all the time. I'm like, oh my gosh, did he accidentally pee on the shower curtain? Did he pee on the floor? You know, little boys, you know, we've all been in a little boy's bathroom. So I would always be like, oh my gosh. So it was one of those things where if I had a half bath, if I had a two and a half bath, I remember when I got a half bath, I was so happy about it. And I've said this a few times and people are probably like, that's so stupid that you keep saying the same thing. But no, I literally bought like the cutest little hand towel from Target that like literally no one ever touched unless they were a guest. I got like cute smelling soap. I put a little volcano candle that's always... The, the scent that's always built burning in anthropology is I put it behind the toilet. I got a little succulent plant. It was like, now when someone came over who was a guest who was like, hey, can I use your bathroom? I'd be like, oh yeah, it's down the hall right there. Cause I know it's cute. I know it looks good. So why would you, <laughs> like a three bedroom, two bathroom house is not the same as three bedroom, two and a half bathroom house. Even half bathrooms make a difference. So stick with the same bathroom number. All right. And then my next rule is to only go up plus or minus, so above or below 10% square footage. So for a 1526 square foot house, you'll only want to add 10% to that or subtract 10% for that. Um, there is an exception. You can go to 20%. For a while there, I was just comping 20% and I realized that I could make it a lot more specific. And I personally changed my rule down to 10% and it made my comping a lot more accurate. If you can't find anything going up, 20% is fine. All right, number seven is another important one. Um, same interior levels. And this is hard to um, tell and there's no exception to this one either. So sometimes when you, you're looking at a property, say we're looking at a property from Keegley and you look on the outside, it looks like it's a single, fam or a single story home. But what if it has a basement, you know, um, a basement is valuable, you know, so you don't want to look at the exterior levels of the home. You want to look at the interior levels of the home. Now, every market is different. And every time I say this, people are like, oh, that's so weird. But in Arizona, basements are super rare because we have weird, um, hard clay soil. We also hardly ever get rain. And when we do get rain, we get a ton of flash floods, like our ground isn't good at absorbing water. So basements are rare. They're hard to dig and they flood a lot, you know, when it rains rarely. And so, you know, like they're just not that common. I'm sitting in a basement right now. The good news about basements, if you do get one in Arizona, and they're typically only on nicer homes, like you'll go to Utah and everyone has a basement and you're like, oh, interesting, because <laughs> like no one has a basement in Arizona. Um, but here in Arizona, yes, Eric, it's cooler. I like I was just upstairs and it's hot. Like we've got our AC pumping. It's just hot down here. I'm like, I've got cold fingers and toes like I'm freezing. So the the plus side to basements in Arizona is they're cooler. They cost less money to cool down. So they are more valuable. Now in Arizona, a second story, like above ground, a two story home is less valuable. So if I'm looking at say a, a 2000 square foot home, same neighborhood, same builder, but one 2000 square foot home is a single level. So it's all on one level. And one 2000 square foot home is two levels. Some people, like I know a lot of um, like first time buyers that I take around in Arizona, they like the idea of a two story because on their first floor, they can keep it nice and cute and there's no kids rooms and you know, it's just a fun place. And then all of their personal stuff is at the top level, but you buy a house in Arizona and you realize, holy crap, we're all hanging out upstairs and it's like a million degrees up here. 
and we're at, at, at night, we're all sweating. We barely have sheets on and we're sweaty and it's hot and it's expensive, you know? And so really quickly you realize like, hey, I actually would prefer next house we buy, you know, even if it's the same size, same bedrooms, bathrooms, let's just do it all on one level. So um, you don't wanna compare single or single story houses to two story houses. And depending on your market, you know, a two story house might be more valuable in your market, but here in Arizona, that's just not true. And that's a really easy mistake to make. And I used to make that mistake where I'm like, well, it's the same builder. It looks the same. It, you know, so what? One's a two story. It, it's a big deal. It's, it's less valuable. Um, and then the next rule is you want the same no garage or garage or carport, unless you're planning on adding a garage to the reno. So this is, there's no ex exceptions to this either, but if you're looking at a two car garage house, you want to still look at a, a two car garage comp it, because you get a third car garage, a third bay, you know, all of a sudden people have a meat fridge. They've got a drink fridge, you know, like they've got, you know, a couple bikes that they can put in there. They've got some storage that they didn't have before. So it just makes a huge difference. Now you wanna compare carports to carports unless you're planning on changing that carport into a garage. So enclosing a carport is actually super easy and inexpensive. You can probably do it for about 10 grand. And you should then look at comps that have, you know, if it's a one car carport, look at one car garages and see if it has that much more of a value add to where that $10,000 spend would be worth it to convert the carport to a garage or if it doesn't make a difference. And again, the reason why you wanna do that, um, Travis made a good point. There's so many reasons why you want a garage in Arizona specifically number one heat, you know, like you go out to your your car and you can barely touch your steering wheel, even if it's in covered parking. Um, it's hot, you know, you've got kids, their car seat metal, you know, buckles are about 9000 degrees. It makes a huge difference. Also, for some of us, um, you know, coming home from work at night, you know, I used to work retail and I come home from work at 10 30 11 o'clock at night being able to pull into a garage rather than pull into, you know, just a garage, you know, a, a, not a garage space, um, like just a concrete slab and then having to walk into my house when it's dark outside. Safety, safety is another thing too. Also, if you can park, Pace and I have lived, we lived in this one house that was, we literally, I think we had like three cars stolen from our driveway. It was just a neighborhood where people like to steal cars. And, um, Pace is like the kind of guy that he just is going to live his life, whatever he wants to do. But he got laptop, GoPro, a bunch of stuff stolen. And it's like, if we had a three car garage to where he could park his truck inside, maybe he'd still have those laptops and GoPros and stuff like that. So it's not just like safety from someone coming in, like snatching you or doing something to you. It's also safety from your cars not get stolen, your, your personal items inside your car not getting stolen. Um, I lived in a super cute gated, um, townhouse community. And I had to park outside because there wasn't a garage space for me. And one day I woke up to go to work and someone had broken my window. They didn't even take anything because they didn't have anything in there. But it's just like one of those things where it's like, even that, that's not that big of a deal. I mean, it's money to, you know, repair your window, but like, I didn't lose anything. They didn't steal my car, but it's just like, now I'm late to work. Now I have to call my manager. Now I have to like, you know, it's, you know, and I was opening that day and I was opening by myself for 45 minutes. So then it's like my department was like, it's just like a whole thing where it's like, if you have a garage, it just is makes such a big difference. That's why you don't want to look for a comp. If your house has no, you know, enclosed parking, you don't want to compare it to a two car garage house. It's just not the same. All right. Now you want to look about 10, years above or 10 years below the year built for the house and the reason i'm coming up on my um time i'm so sorry i knew when he was like go over comping i'm like we're gonna have a hard time um i'm gonna finish this out and then if you guys want to hang around i'd love to answer some questions um but i do want to also give you guys some homework so i'm not going to finish this out right now so let me stop just for a second because i know some people have plans like you plan on being here till 11 you're probably going to leave at 11. um 
So really quick for homework for everyone for tonight. Um, I would love to show you guys how to find deals on Privy really quick. And it is so easy that, um, let me go back and restart this. All right. Nope, sorry everybody. I was trying to zoom in and I'm getting, I'm getting nervous because I've got seven minutes left with everybody. Okay, there you go. So I'm gonna zoom into Arizona, which is where I'm gonna be focused for this challenge. And I'm gonna click um, find deals. All right. And I was looking in Arcadia Light yesterday. So here we go. Privy is fantastic. Oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Oh my gosh, you guys, I got nervous. And so now I'm screwing up. Not my last seven minutes, not showing you guys. Okay, let me go back and show you what I did. <clears throat> so um, I went to fix and flip. And then I clicked on find active deals. And then I zoomed into my area where I was looking yesterday, where I called Rob from. Which is Arcadia Light. All right, I might have to click now. There you go. So I clicked find deals. It's thinking, sorry. <clears throat> so with the find deals button that we just used, it will actually look on MLS for things that are a certain percentage under value. So this should be a potential deal. So let's click on this one. <clears throat> so this one is a four bedroom, two bath, 1631 square feet. It's got a cute little carport. It's got a pool nice and clean got a little shed or like detached workshop or something it looks like it has like a cute little window oh there's only 11 pictures how interesting so this the, the agent is saying this is a remodel special presenting this charming four bedroom two bathroom home now available in a quiet phoenix location grass front yard fruit bearing trees okay sounds like a good idea so this person already recognizes that this is going to be something for someone to remodel it so it's um you know sometimes you'll see like investor special or something like that where you're like okay you know i get it so let's zoom in at some of these comps i want to see closer there we go so it's trying to say that because we're here that we should be getting you know some of these 800 so i'm going to comp this house really quick but it is listed for 695 now we can put in an offer to the agent um where we can you know see if we can oh an owner agent okay so the agent actually owns this house themselves so um Without comping, if some of you don't want to comp, what we can do is we can um, text message Rob or email him, which is what he asked me to do. So I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to tell my buyer that I just talked to that he said that he would buy an Arcadia Light, which is that's where this house is. And I'm going to. No, we're going to look at closed houses, Heather. Sorry. I'm just looking at the activity in Privy. I'm doing something right now to where you don't have to comp. So everyone reached out to their buyer and now you can tell your buyer, say, hey, what would you pay for 3035 East Montecito Avenue? So I'm gonna email Rob really quick. I'm gonna say, hi, Rob. Thanks for talking to me yesterday. Um, I found a cute house in Arcadia Light that has great potential. 
um, needs rehab because there is no interior pictures of this. Rob is the buyer that I contacted last night, the cash buyer that I contacted last night. Um, there's no pictures of the interior of this house. So obviously it's, it's not looking good. I don't know the condition of it, but the exterior has been cared for. The, the, um, the yard is, is mowed more than likely. This is probably owned by an older person. Um, so I'm assuming that maybe it's a little dusty inside. Maybe it's a little bit dated, but I'm not thinking that this is going to be something to where there's mental illness going on, that there's a hoarder situation. You know, I don't think anything looking at the outside of this house someone is caring for it so i'm going to give them the address really quick 3035 east montecito ave what would you pay for this okay he's probably not going to respond in two minutes because again he told me to email him um so i'm gonna now take off my, I'm going to pretend like I'm Rob because I actually am, you know, I am a buyer. I could buy this potentially for myself. So if you guys want to stick around, I'm going to comp this for myself. And then I'm going to call this agent. It's William Jennings. And I'm going to see what kind of info I can get from, that I can get from him on potentially putting in an offer because this actually is a cute house and I know the area this would be fun to not only remodel but it would also be fun to sell um so I'm going to see what kind of price I should offer this person and then I'm going to have a conversation with the agent and then we can I'll put in an offer tonight so everyone who needs to leave you've got one more minute I was so nervous with Pace's um, outline what he wanted me to cover because I'm not finishing everything. And again, I'm gonna keep going. Um, but what I want everyone to do is to go on Privy tonight and click on Fix and Flip, zoom into your market and click Find Deals. And I want you to find a house that looks like it has potential like this one. This one's perfect. It literally says in, this, in the description that it, it needs a remodel, remodel special. And then I want you, instead of comping, I want you to send it, the address to a, the buyer that you guys contacted last night and say, what would you pay for this? And if you wanna take it a step further, cause that's already a lot. And sometimes this is hard to do. I would love it if you called the real estate agent and um, just had a conversation to see where they are, how long have they, you know, been been trying to sell the house? Would they be interested in an offer about that price? So um, no one has to do that. If you want to stay while I call William and you can hear me call him, then let me know if you want to stay. I would love, I'm still going to be here. So I'm going to keep going. But if you have to check out, please get on Privy tonight. Click on fix and flip, zoom into your market, click find deals. And if you find one, send it to your buyer and say, what would you pay for this? Okay. All right. Oh my goodness gracious. Let me come on in here. One second. Sorry, just resetting something. Oh man, the per the not perks of not being at your own computer. Tell you what. All right. Let's see if I can remember my own password.
Well, you know what? In the meantime, while I'm tootling around with my password, which is so annoying, I don't want to make everyone wait for me. Um, let's call Will Jennings. There he is. And there's a house. Looks like this is one of his only houses. So I'm just going to call him. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. And I'm just going to have a conversation with him about what kind of offers he's getting. Um, good question, Jenny Kim. What's Jenny Kim's question? You need to scroll up and find it. Moving in with us, I don't know. Rental comps. Okay. Sounds like a brand new listing. Fix and flippers is the Jenny Kim question. I don't know what Jenny Kim's question is, but if Jenny Kim wants to ask her question, her question again, I'll keep an eye out for it. Okay, looks like she's looking for a document. So I will move on really quick. I'm going to try to log in one more time because this is going to help me really quick. Sorry, everyone, for making you wait. All right, I'm going to try one more password reset. I swear, the Apple passwords really do be messing you up. At least me. Choose my own password, please. This is my worst nightmare to have to like log into something while everyone's staring at me. So I'm really sorry, everybody. Actually, you guys aren't staring at me. You were staring at my screen. That's nice. <laughs> All right. Let me try to log in real quick. I'm going to pretend like I'm Rob because I doubt Rob's going to respond to me. Yep. All right. So I'm going to really quickly take a look at his listing. Everyone said something that he, he increased the price. Is that what you guys said? Someone said he increased the price on Zillow or something. Because I'm privy. He's up for six ninety five, yeah, six ninety five. Maybe you guys mean in like the history of the listing, he increased the price. So let's take a peek. No, when he was new, he was six ninety five. So he's only been on the market for one day. So negotiating with someone who's only been on the market for one day is going to be a little bit more difficult, just because he's going to think. Even if six ninety five is a price where he's out to lunch, he's gonna still think he can get it because he hasn't he doesn't have any proof that he can't. So I'm going to um I'm gonna comp it really quick how I would comp it. And I'm not gonna focus on this too much. If you guys wanna follow along, you'll see that I'm I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing, but I'm not gonna go too crazy about it. So I'm going to look at active, pending, and closed over the last three months. And I'm going to start in his actual neighborhood. Um, because that's where I want to, that's where I want to begin and see what I can find. Okay, so there's no active, pending, or closed in his neighborhood. So instead, I'm going to look at, um, I'm going to do one of those, um, 
radius searches and I'm going to go out a mile. So he is, let's see where he's at. What roads he's on. He's on 32nd Street and Indian School just north of Los Olivas Park. All right. There's Thomas. Here's Indian School. I think he's right here. And again, I'm going fast. You guys are probably like, dude, girl, slow down. But I don't want to get too picky on this just because comping, teaching comping just takes a long time. All right, so I want to go out a mile. That's my first thing. I probably actually don't want to cross Thomas. Let me go to Thomas. I actually don't even want to go up to the Biltmore, to be honest. See, I, like, know the area. Okay, so I'm just going to... Like, unfortunately, it's 0 0.69, 69. Haha, ha, everyone have a nice little laugh about that. But I'm, because I know the area, I'm going to stick right there. Oh, there's a ton. So now this is where we are going to start narrowing ourselves down. So, um, you know, we want to compare it to the same property type. It's a single family house. Um, what is he? How many bedrooms and bathrooms is he? He's a 4-2. So I'm going to look at three bedrooms and four bedrooms because one of these might be have a den. I don't know if anybody remembers that. I'm going to look at two bathrooms. And I'm not going to look at this as any sort of addition or anything like that. This is a pretty cute house, and I think I could find some comps that are pretty similar. Okay, now I've got 19, so I can narrow this down e even further. So let's just see it like some of the stuff that we've got. Like what do they look like? So we've got our Montecito. We've got one for eight ninety five dollars active. Let's see what it looks like. See, that's like one of the reasons why I chose Arcadia Light is it's pretty cute. Like you don't have to do anything too crazy um, to get, you know, a decent value. Like this house has a pool just like ours. Super cute. So they've got a garage. Let's see how big this carport is. Do you guys think this is a two-car carport? Let's see. Yeah, two-car carport. So I could convert this into a two-car garage. So I am fine at looking at two-car garage stuff, but I do not want to look at anything larger than a two-car garage. Um, interior levels, I'm going to stick with one. Took one out. Let's see what we got. So $695, $895, but we have one for $599. What does this one look like? Oh, I forgot something super important. Not me forgetting one of my most important comping rules, square footage. So I want to stay 1631. I don't want anything way bigger than that because you could get a 2,500 square foot house. That's four bedrooms. So I'm going to stick around. They say 1631. Is that what I said? Yep, 1631. Okay. So 1631 times 1.1. 1 .1. All right, 1795. Let's just go up to 1800 and 1631 times 0 0.9. Let's do 1450. There you go. Oh, that took us way down. So it took us to 10 houses. One interior level, we went over that, John, in kind of a lot of detail. So it means there's one story, one interior level, no stairs up or down. There's no basement. There's no second story. All right. So we've got one coming soon on Monterosa Street. So changing the square footage. Oh, that's so interesting. For 720, my gosh. Okay, this one, what in the world? Ooh, that is definitely probably not a deal. So now I'm going to be looking at some closed comps that look similar to our house. This is 585. He's selling for 695, so he's selling for $110,000 more. That's crazy. Whoever picked this up for 585 probably did really good. Uh-oh. We're in trouble. Look at this. This is for sure a remodel. They virtually staged it. It's not done super 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 well, but it's definitely remodeled. It's cute. Oh, it's got a little like What is that? I can't tell. Casita office entrance. So I don't know if that's detached or attached. I guess we'll find out. Oh, there you go. 
Yep, it's a little detached. So they've got a pool as well. That's crazy because this is 635. It's closed. Let's see when it closed. So it closed April 12th. And he's trying to sell his that needs a full remodel for 695. So it's not looking good for his price. I still want to call him though before we um, close this out. They just want to talk to him. <sighs> Don't do this to me, MLS. We'll be in big trouble. <gasps> Don't do it to me. Sometimes MLS messes up and I... Okay, well, we'll just forget about Campbell for a second. So this one too, remodeled 700,000. Eep, eep a cheap. He's trying to sell his for 695, that's not good. There has to be something more pricey that he's basing his list price at 695. He's really hopeful. As most owner agents are, they're a little delusional. I've even been there a few times. That one's not remodeled per se, but it's definitely clean. So they, they've got a one car garage for this one. Um, definitely super cute. 770. Let's see this one. 850. This is probably where he's getting his price from. He probably is not a home flipper and he probably thinks, oh, someone's gonna make 150 grand when they remodel my house. It's like, yeah, they might spend a hundred grand remodeling your house. Okay. No pool for this one. So he's definitely choosing to um have blinders on remember how i said you could um you can tweak your comps you can ignore things that have closed like this 635 remodeled house that's clearly a comparable for his he's just choosing to put blinders on and looking at the outliers he's looking at these two and he's thinking oh yeah someone's gonna kill it and i'm gonna get every penny out of this house and who knows he says he's an owner agent like who knows if he actually lived here if it was a rental or something Debbie Cohen and Sandra Evans. How is he an owner agent? Who knows? Maybe it's his wife. Let's just call him and just chat with him. It's not a deal at his list price. And it, it would be interesting to see, to see what Rob says he would pay for it. He might come back in like the fours. Because if we're going to sell this house for worst case scenario, 630, and we don't know what it looks like on the inside, he like you might have to spend 100 grand, you know? So this guy's a little bit out to lunch. So if anytime someone has a good name like William, I always try to look at their email because like, am I going to call him and say, hey, William, how's it going? Or has he got a nickname? And in this case, he has a, he has a nickname. So let's call him 303-916-7793. All right. Actually, I should still leave my screen share on, huh? Yes, Will. Oh, yeah. Hey, Will. This is Laura Morby calling from EXP Realty. How are you doing? Good. How about yourself? Good. I saw your super cute uh, brick Montecito go up. Uh, yes. What was that, yesterday? Or is that today? Yesterday. Yesterday. Okay, so I saw, I think it actually would be a good little, you know, potential remodel. Um, but I was wondering if you have any photos of the inside of it. I do. You do? We might change out some of it. Have you, have, you, have you had a chance to look at it yet or no? No, I didn't go by and check it out yet. Oh, okay. We've had four showings, so I'm just curious. Was one of you or one of them? Oh, yeah, yeah no. I've got some. Uh, yeah, I can text you over some. Oh, like. yeah, yeah, um, I'd love to see. I assume it's probably just dated on the inside because the outside looks super well maintained, so I'm assuming it just... It might... is. It's just, yeah. Yeah, it just needs new tile, flooring. I mean, it's all from, like original so right 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 it's not, it's not uh it's not like badly worn out or you know abused but yeah uh, the lady that owned it before had a little bit i mean the carpets need to be changed for sure because you can kind of smell tap pee a little bit oh yeah yeah so, but uh other than that no it's, it's it's in good shape all the way around and you know, they maintain the house really well the roof has been replaced i think within the last 10 years too oh so. nice nice okay cool um Perfect. And then yeah, I'll send you some photos of what I'm going to have and um, yeah, and feel free to go look at it anytime you'd like. Too. Okay. Awesome. So. Have you had any offers yet? No, we just one day. So we're, I mean, you never know with showings. You no, put, know, true, true. You, you, you put those like kind of keywords in your listing, like investor special or, 
you know, usually when right. there's no interior there photos, you're going to get a ton of investors submitting you some blind offers. Um, right. Well, okay. Well, I'll follow up with you. I'll go check it out. And I would love to see, you know, what kind of starts rolling in, you know, for okay. you. And are you guys pretty set on that list price or you got some wiggle room? Yeah, if not, I'm not. If we don't get somewhere pretty close to that, then I'm just going to flip it. Okay. So All right. That's what I do. I do a lot of houses. So it's just either we get a good number for it or we're just going to do it ourselves. Right, right, so right. About 100, probably to do it really nicely. Around a hundred thousand, five hundred twenty-five. Well, it just depends. You could do fifty-two. Yeah. I think making that guest house in the, or a garage in the back like a guest house would be a good point. So. Yeah, I agree. Of parking in the front. Yeah, I agree. I was I was actually um, estimating about a hundred grand. Of course, I haven't seen the inside of it. The only thing that makes me mm -hmm. a little bit nervous is there's that comp on Meadowbrook that closed for six thirty-five that has a really similar setup. It's not mm -hmm. as nice as what I would do. And again, I haven't seen the inside of yours, but. Um, it has a pool. It has the little detached, you know, garage, you know, guest house, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So I was just like, eh, you know, worst case scenario. And it closed in April 12th, I think. Like 635 oh, okay. in the great. There is some, you know, obviously higher stuff where you, they've enclosed the garage and they've done a pretty nice job at like 770, which would be nice. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you put 100 grand into a 695 purchase price. I don't know if I would necessarily come in for oh, you think, at six ninety five. Uh, around nine, easily on that house. You think I could get okay. nine? Oh, we do it right. We're trying to try to get. I'm go for nine ninety five or something like that. Okay. Do some beautiful finishes though. Yeah. You know, it's not going to be really done right. So. Okay. All right. Well, um, I'll go take a peek at it. Yes. Text me over some pictures of the inside. I'd love to see it, we'll and do. then I'll go check it out sometime today. Okay. All right. Thank you, Will. I'll just talk to you. All right. Bye. So he's out to lunch. That is so freaking goofy. Like, I don't know. You guys saw he's like, we'll do super nice stuff. And it's like, bro, if there are no closed comps, like what's the when if he's going to flip it himself and if he does it all the time, he should know better than that. You can't just. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I have a lot to say about this. I'm so sorry. I'm going to say something. And if he ever sees this video, I feel so bad. But I've dealt with so many home flippers who are like, well, I'm going to put really nice appliances in there and I'm going to do really top end granite or marble and I'm going to do wood front cabinets. So they're going to spend more money also when there's no comps that justify that. And in fact, there are comps that justify something way less. And they think that that will automatically give them value um, or that a buyer will come in. Cause again, buyers determine value where there's going to be some buyer that's like, I don't care if this, appra if it appraises for 770, I'll give you a million bucks because you put in, you know, GE monogram appliances and you put in marble in the kitchen. And it's like, you can't, what comping is and what flipping is as an actual business is you have to assume that you're going to close for what is proven to have closed. And you have to remodel with the finishes that they had. You can't just come out of left field and put finishes that would go in a $20 million property in Los Angeles, California, into a house that should sell between 630 and 750. That's a pretty wide range, but you're not just going to sell it for the high nines. You're not like all these people. Oh my gosh. I've worked with so many people who are like, we're going to set the comps in the neighborhood. And it's like, that's a bad investment strategy because you're going to list it for nine and you're $200,000 more than every other house that's getting listed. People aren't going to come by and even look at it because it's just like, there are no $900,000 buyers looking in this area. There's no million dollar properties investing in this area. The, the only thing with him that's the um, saving grace for him is he's not buying a house for from himself for six ninety five. dollars He's not buying a house for, like, he, he obviously got the house for much less. He's trying to make a profit and get rid of it and not have to sell it. But he's also, in my opinion, sometimes you take a risk like he's doing because what he's doing is a risk. It's not based in fact. And it might pay off for him, but that's like an overconfidence where it's just like right now with the market, the way it is with like a lot of buyers being scared out of the market with interest rates as high as they are, you're going to do something with no proof of concept. Like 
just no, you you don't need to pick higher end finishes that are going to knock it out of the park to justify a hundred thousand dollar more value. You're not it's like you're, you can't justify a higher value where there are no comps because that end buyer that, you know, business professional, that family that's going to end up living here, that single guy that wants to live in Arcadia, but it's going to end up living in Arcadia light. Even if he tells Rob or Will, sorry, not Rob, Will, say Will lists that house for $950,000 and he gets some guy that's going to come over and pay nine fifty. dollars that guy's still going to get a loan. There's still going to be an appraiser involved. And the appraiser comes back and uses that 635 comp and tweaks it a little bit for finishes, maybe ups that price and value of that home to be more comparable to uh, Will's 950. Like that appraiser is not adjusting those prices up to 950. Anyways, I'm not gonna waste my time looking at it. I Oh, he sent me pictures of what it looks like um, on the inside. If anyone's interested in what it looks like, just let me know and I'll... It's definitely just like an old lady who lived there. The kitchen is like, no, that's the laundry. Any pics of the kitchen. He's probably going to get bugged with me because he's probably like, go look at it. I already have a ton of people who've looked at it. It's like, okay, you know, just because you have four people look at it, you don't have any offers. You know, if it was a good deal, you would have already had an offer. Because again, us investors don't mess around. If we want a property, we're going to buy it. Anyways, poor Will. I hope he, <laughs> if some dumb newbie gives him six ninety five, dollars bless their heart. Um, anyways, but that's just not a deal for me. Um, okay. Does anyone have any questions? I'd like to spend, our, my poor um, nanny has been here 24 minutes extra. Does anyone have any questions for me? that they, how do I get to my questions? Where are my raised hands? <clears throat> Let's see. How do people raise, how do I get to people's raised hands? Carly, do you know? Carly might not be on here anymore with me. She might be like, hey girl, get out of there. How do you look at raised hands? I'm so confused. Let's see, Zoom, meeting. Okay, I don't know how to get to raised hands. I thought I could get to them. Carly's here, okay, hi. How do you go to raised hands? I thought it was on the bottom before. Maybe people can't raise hands. Does anyone have a question that they want to type in the side chat? It's going to be kind of hard for questions because people comment like crazy on the side. Can we get the calculator? Absolutely. That will be part of what gets emailed out to you guys. There are 57 questions in the Q&A. 66 questions now. Oh my gosh. Okay. I guess I'll go to the Q&A instead. Okay. Some of these questions, I don't understand what you guys are saying. Let's see. Open. There we go. 149. Oh my gosh. Can you comp with Privy? Yep. I comped with Privy for the Carrie Lane house, um, Israel. Um, Mike, hi, I'm located in the Bay area, California on yesterday's zoom. You said to start in my local area. I was a bit overwhelmed with how high sales prices are. We're on Privy. Can you recommend me to continue starting in my area or should I start in another market? Um, I'm not a big fan of anything in California. Everything is super overpriced. Um, as far as like holding stuff, I'm not interested in holding anything in California either. Pace said that um, as long as you're not in like a tiny small town. Um, so I, if, if you don't like it, I would maybe go to like a suburb of San Francisco that's more appropriately priced um, or come to Phoenix, start looking in Phoenix. Um, Hi. I can't Sorry, hear I you. I don't know. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Sorry, I had technical difficulties. If you want to find the raised hands, mm -hmm. go to participants at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then it should pop up little participants on the side. And then there's panelists. And then on the side, there's attendees. And there's all the hands that are raised. I love that. Okay. And I'm then gonna... you go to more and uh, 
rename. Uh, I think you go to more and then you say unmute. You can watch them. All right, perfect. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. I'm randomly going to pick two people and then I have to be with my babies because that's a long time. So um, let's do Linda. Hi, Linda. Linda, are you there? Linda Creighton in Texas. All right, I'm going to give her five more seconds and I'm going to move on to someone else. All right, I'm going to take Linda down. All right. All right. I'm going to say your name wrong. Jereen? Jereen? In California, a newbie? 909 area code. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Are I'm doing good. Good. What's oh, your question? You. Um, well, I actually have two questions. Sure. So the, the first one is I had seen some videos of Pace where he put like um getting like starting your LLC like as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, so what would you recommend since we like are literally planning on like making deals in the next like couple of days, essentially? Um, I would Definitely. I mean, there, there's so many liability things that go from doing stuff in your personal name and tax mm -hmm. things that go from yeah. doing stuff in your personal name. So I highly recommend doing stuff, something in an LLC. Okay. You can go with, st to start with prime.com to set okay. something up okay. and you should be able to set up like a pretty basic LLC that you can start using for this and then maybe get a little bit specific with them down the line once you've done a couple deals. But I would just get um, at least something set up just for your liability. Okay. Bare minimum. okay. So as basically as soon as possible. Like yeah, today. absolutely. Okay. You don't want some seller to get mad at you or a wholesaler to get mad at you or an end buyer to get mad at you. And you did it in your personal name and they're now they're coming after you personally and any home that you own personally. Like, it's just, it's not a good idea to do anything in this business in your personal name. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Yeah. And then, so my other question is, I went um, to the store yesterday and I ended up talking to this guy who was like, who wanted to uh, do rentals and stuff, or he wanted to rent, sorry. Yeah. And um, I was like, oh, well, yeah. So we ended up talking and chatting and stuff. I mentioned that I'm an investor and he was like, oh, cool. Like, I want your information. And so like, I obviously know, like, he looked, he seemed basically open to like, I guess my advice, I guess he was kind of in a sense, like, oh, he's like, oh, she's an investor. Like, she probably knows, she knows the market, da, 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 da. Now, mm -hmm. obviously, I'm honestly just getting into it, like, maybe in a month. <laughs> so I've been a month kind of into this kind of realm. I haven't done any deals or anything. I've just kind of been doing research and, and studying. Anyway, all that to say, how I do have a follow-up call with this guy. Mm -hmm. um, how should I go? How could you recommend me going about, like, I guess, recommending... Kind of a like maybe like a rent to own type of deal or something like that or kind of just suggesting to him obviously unless like he's renting out here temporarily but let's say you're trying to do like a long-term thing or i know he he definitely seemed intrigued in wanting to learn about investing or mm -hmm. in, at least making money in some way so how like what would you recommend okay just a couple clarification questions okay. is he wanting to buy a property to be a landlord is he looking for a property to rent, meaning he's a tenant, or is he wanting to get into real estate investing and be taught? Because you said um, a couple of things that's making me think he's all three, but there's no way. Um, no, so it would be more so like tenant. Mm -hmm. um, it would, yeah, it would definitely be more so tenant. But okay. I can tell that he's like open to like wanting to learn more about like, you know, saving money, making money, stuff like that. So, so you're, you're, this is one of those things where it was like, Gloria loves her, her home or her hometown and she believes in it and she wants more people to live there. Uh -huh. um, he's not going to be a money-making thing for you until, unless you have a house that he can move into or that right. you could sell or finance to him as like a uh -huh. lease option. Right. So for him, it's like, you, you have no idea. He could have six evictions on his credit he could have fifty dollars to his name he could have a violent felony right. so your follow-up conversation with him is like what can you do to provide value to him as with mm -hmm. all things you know you want to spend the, you want to spend your time where you know you can provide something of value to him and he can provide uh -huh. something of value to you 
So I would still talk to him and then maybe refer him to a realtor in your area and wash your hands of it because right now you guys aren't going to benefit each other. You don't have a house he can rent and which can benefit you and benefit him. Like there just is nothing. And, and you're learning real estate too. Like it's more beneficial for you to, you know, figure it out, get a couple properties going, you know, mm-hmm. wholesale something, maybe JV with somebody, you know, before like there, there'll be like a step, uh, you know, you could be a homeowner who has a property to rent right. in 60 days. Like that's Uh totally doable, but like you don't want to have something to where you're making decisions based on where he wants to live and how much money he can spend. Like you don't want Mm -hmm. to wrap yourself up into somebody else when you're just trying to figure it out yourself. Uh, I would still, I would still talk to him. I'm glad you're talking to people and making connections because you never know who you're going to meet. And sometimes, you know, a random conversation in a store with somebody might be something to where all of a sudden you have a great partnership with somebody and you guys are fixing and flipping or you guys, you know, now own a couple Airbnbs together, but it sounds to me like he just needs a house to rent. Yes. Yeah. And you're not really the person to help him right now. So I would still, I would give him a call and say, Hey, I, you know, I don't have anything active available for you to rent. You don't have to say, I don't own anything or I'm just getting uh-huh. started out or I actually am not a, a landlord yet. You uh-huh. can just, so you still have a connection with him if you mm-hmm. want to foster it at some point. Um, but again, it's like Gloria, it's just a waste of time. Like you want to make money. Yeah. Like that would be more like charity work for you to go around and try to help him find a place to rent at this point. Right. Well, That's I would call true. him and I would say, Hey, I don't have anything currently available for you to rent. That's not a lie. Right. You're not lying and saying, I don't own anything. I technically am not a landlord. You're just saying, I don't have anything for you currently right now. That can mean that all of your properties are currently rented or it can mean you don't own anything. So right. I would just say, hey, I currently don't have anything for you. Um, even if you told me what you wanted because I don't have anything, you know, I, I, I can't help you. But I know a fantastic realtor that can help find something. And then um, I'd love to, you know, if you do want to keep a relationship with this person, you know, and you mm-hmm. think that there's some sort of financial benefit with you two in the future and say, I'd love to still keep in touch. Maybe when you're ready to move out, I'll have something available and maybe you can rent from me. Okay. You know, so I would kind of distance yourself from that. That's a really nice connection. But again, it's more something that's like, that's nice. But right. how much time during the day do you have? And if you don't have anything and you're not, I don't, you could be a realtor. I don't know. But um, like, are you going to go on rent.com? And search for you, him. And no, search for a rental and go take him and show him stuff. <laughs> yeah. And again, you don't know. He could have six evictions. He could have a violent felony. He could not even have money for a security deposit. Like you don't know. And right. you could ask him that, but like also that's not really any of your business because you don't mm-hmm. have anything to rent him. Like you're just getting information from him that you're not going to do anything with. Like that's more for if he talks to a realtor and they say, okay, like, do you, do you have any restricted breed dogs, you know, Mm -hmm. what's your price range, you know, are you comfortable with putting in a security deposit, you know, like, do you have any evictions on your record? Like, those are things that they're going to ask him because they need to help him find a house that's appropriately suited to his needs. So I wouldn't even ask him any of those questions. I would just call him tomorrow during your scheduled call and say, hey, so nice to meet you. I really appreciate that. Um, I actually don't have anything currently active for rent right now, um, but I want to connect you with somebody and then just connect them with someone and wash your hands of it. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you so much for all that. Yeah, for sure. I hope you have a good Saturday. I will. Thank you. It's been great so far with this training. Thank you guys so much for all that you do. Oh, you are welcome. All right. I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to go be with my babies. All right. How do I answer you? What the heck? All right, Benjamin Poe from Alabama. Are you there? I am here. Hi, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. We're uh, we're enjoying the humidity out here. Super hot. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I bet. I do not wish I was there. So, yeah, (laughs) me neither at the moment. But uh, (laughs) anyways, my my question is, I was doing the uh, the homework. uh, Mm -hmm. I downloaded Privy and all that stuff, and uh, we're... We're knuckleheads, you know. We we're two hours ahead of you, so we change our clocks twice a year. And, yeah. Uh, 
So anyway, oh, pacing his knucklehead stuff. I don't. <laughs> so anyway, so you know, I did everything. True people search. Uh, I forget what the other ones were called, and uh, mm-hmm. I made like over sixty phone calls and never connected with anybody. I actually, got one individual. who's a female. Uh, her name is Christy in Georgia. Mm-hmm. And actually, trying to get out of the business. Mm-hmm. Oh. I was like, well, do you want to offload any of your properties? Like, you know, let me accelerate your retirement. Let me Great you. follow-up question. Yeah. You know, and she was like, I don't really feel like talking right now. And I was like, well, can I, can you save my phone number? And then she just hung up. And I'm like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I sent her a text message, like, immediately. Mm-hmm. Like, save my number, things of that nature. But I didn't know if there was, like, a, a better script to kind of go after. Because I have no issue just... Just jumping right in feet first and like, hey, what's going on? How are you? Yeah. Um, I so one would think that I'm a big fan of scripts. I'd be happy to put something together for everybody if you guys are interested. Um sometimes with scripts you get this thing where like you're going to kind of shoot yourself in the foot more than if you just made 60 more calls and kind of fumbled over your words or had people hang up on you. Then when people read a script, it's like Hi, um, is this Will? Oh, hi, Will. Uh, my name is Laura Morby, and I'm a local investor in the Phoenix market. And I was just curious. I saw your property on, um, hold on, I'm looking at my paper, uh, 30, 30, like you kind of just start reading stuff rather than having a natural conversation. So I don't know, maybe people didn't answer because it was so late. Like, were you making the calls last night? Were you making them this morning? No, I was, uh, I was trying to be, uh, I can't think of the right word. Uh, proactive. <laughs> proactive in the sense of, you know, protecting people's time. I'm sure that some people were asleep, things of that nature. So I wasn't like, bombarding on the calls, but I got up at 530 this morning, which mm-hmm. is like, and I'm, I'm going after Georgia and Tennessee and mm-hmm. Tennessee is the same time zone as me. So Georgia is an hour ahead. And then I even called some in y'all's uh, area, which y'all are two hours behind. So I just started yeah. calling. And I was trying to be as uh, favorable to people's times as possible. But yeah. I've, made, I've made a list. Like I went back old school, got me pen and paper, and I like went through there, all the LLCs that I identified and got phone numbers and names and things of that nature. And I just started knocking out my list. Yeah. And trying to be as cons- consistent as possible in that. So I wasn't just, you know, flying by the seat of my pants. I had a, I had a whole two sheets of paper that I was <laughs> you know, running through and, Well, flying by the seat of your pants, you did everything right. I know exactly what you did wrong. Cold calling is always super successful during certain times of day. It just is. It's just the way it is. Like um, someone put in here, don't call before 9 a.m. That's not necessarily true. Some people are like literally walking in to the office, even if they're not a nine to five employee, it's an investor. They're walking into their office at 9 a.m. or they're in line at Starbucks and they're like, oh, here goes another day, you know. It is also Saturday. It's also the 4th of July weekend. So you've got a lot of people imbibing, you know, you got a lot of people traveling right now, um, especially, I mean, 4th of July is like one of those big travel holidays just because it's so blasted hot most of the places. So people are escaping to higher elevations. They're going to places where there's water. They're leaving their state entirely like us and we're going up to Utah. Um so I think that's your only problem is just the timing of all of this. So um, by the time we ended last night, what time was it there? Like 8.30? It was 9.30. 9.30. See, so any anyone you called last night, even if you were calling people in Arizona, I, I mean, I was nervous to call Rob last night and I'm in Arizona and it was like, what was that? Like 5.30 because I was like, he's probably, it's Friday night. He's probably getting ready to go out to dinner. And I caught him before his steak dinner, but still it's like, there's just with cold calling, there's just a time and being like one of those early bird gets the worm and just being eager is such a great thing. And I'm glad that you got excited and you had your list and you were ready to go and you were up early and you were getting to it, but like more than likely they were just asleep. So you made 60 calls and you only got one person on the phone. Anytime that happens, you just have to be like, you know, I'm going to put this on hold for two hours. I'll go, let me go take my dog for a walk and go grab a coffee. Let me go to the gym and work out. I don't know if you have kids. Let me hang out with my kids and we'll make pancakes together. And then I'll hit the phones again in an hour or I'll hit the phones again in two hours. So you didn't do anything wrong. Um, you know, that, that woman hanging up on you, what time was that? I don't want to say I can tell you. It was like nine o'clock. 
nine o'clock at night. Yeah, she probably was just like, I'm tired, you know. Nine o'clock this morning. Well, see, I thought there was going to be a huge accountability thing going on because I know yeah. how I was going to be like, look, I called all these people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when he gave you guys homework, he did say it was for all day today too. So, um, he he's. I mean, you guys can keep calling today, you know, and have a couple conversations because like there's some people, you know, you're in Georgia. There's some people that are completely on the East Coast. And so, you know, like by the time we stopped last night, it was way too late. And then we started at 9 a.m. Arizona time. I know that's 11 noon. Some places what probably 11 would be the latest. But even then, it's like how many people had the time to make conversations with buyers. So I would say that anybody who did the same thing as you, this is actually probably pretty good. Still try like even recall that list of 60 people. You'll probably get, you know, 40 that will answer now. Sure. So I'll be honest, it was a kick in the teeth at first. I was like, man, this is. Oh. Uh, no, <laughs> no, it's just the time. I mean, when I called because I was in Arizona, both people picked up, you know, and those type of people paces right. Like literally like one of the guys I used to work for got a phone case that literally was a dollar bill or a hundred dollar bill because your phone is your money maker. You call it your money phone. Like when Pace and I had our home investors franchise, we literally got a separate phone with a separate phone number that was like, this phone will never die. This phone will never be on silent. This phone will always be maintained. This is our money phone. If it rings, it's money calling. We need to answer it. And so most people that were on that list feel the same about your phone. So if you give them a, if you go back through that list and you call those 60 people, I bet you'll have like, You'll probably get 40 people to answer and you'll probably have like 15 to 20 like super good meaningful conversations and you'll absolutely get two or three good buyers well that's the plan i appreciate yeah. you that's my question thank you yeah okay does that make you feel better or do you still want a script because if you want a script i'd happily write one but it won't be till later today hey look i'm not gonna take any of your time once you get back <laughs> well i don't mind if other people in the in the in the chat really want a script i just I try to be really careful with scripts because something that comes naturally to me and that I would say, you would say it and you'd be like, I feel so stupid. And then you become robotic and you have this situation to where people are hanging up on you or they don't take you seriously because they can tell that you're reading a script. Much like when you, all of us, we all get spam calls. We all get telemarketers. Our phones now will usually warn us if it's about to be a telemarketer. I still answer them because I consider my phone a money phone. But it's like you can tell, like the second you pick it up, they're reading a freaking script. Even if they have an American accent, even if the service is great, even if there's not a beep before they talk, you can tell they're reading a script. So it's like, I don't really want to give you guys a script. You know, Iris, please, I can't do it naturally at the beginning. Honestly, I would rather you guys just fall all over your words and say a bunch of stuff. Like me, last night when I was talking to Rob, I literally stuttered. I think I counted three or four times. I said the complete wrong word that I didn't mean just because I couldn't think of the word. It's just, you know, like I would rather you guys just Nike just do it because it's not hard. The buy box questions, you can use that as the framework of your script. Like I need to know if they're actively buying. I need to know what area they're buying. I need to know what property type they're buying. I need to know like these things and have that guide you. And the reason why I said to look at the house before is to come up with a genuine compliment. That way, when you get them on the phone, hey, Rob, I saw that you flipped that house on I don't know what that was. Eighth Avenue. I really like that was such a cute little brick house. You guys did a great job. And then I had like the bones of the information I was trying to gather. Right. So I would rather give you guys the buy box questionnaire and that's your script than telling you to say, hi, uh, Rob, my name is Laura Morby and um, I am a local investor in the Phoenix market. Already Rob shut off. Rather than me being like, hey, Rob, this is Laura Morby. I saw that super cute flip that you did on 8th Avenue. If I put that in a script, like you're going to like, you know, Benjamin, you're not going to call some lady and be like, I saw that super cute house that you did on. Like, you're going to feel like an idiot saying that because that's not your natural thing that you would say. I don't know. I might. If it works, I'm not trying. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I'd rather you guys just, you know, kind of wing it for a while. You just want to have a natural conversation. Look at the house that they did, get a genuine compliment from them, and then ask them if they'd be interested in finding some or buying something from you if you find them another good deal. 
and then fill it in with those buy box questions. That's you what know? I was trying to do with the young lady that, you know, that she was like, I'm getting out of the business. Yeah. Like, do you know any buyers? Do you in, in, in your circle that and she was just like, I don't really feel like talking. I was like, oh, I get it. I totally get it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, to be honest, that is like, that was an objection that she gave you and you handled that objection with the perfect question. Are you looking, well, are you looking to sell any of those? You're getting out of the business. Do you know, like you had these follow-up questions with her that were perfect. The only problem is the time of night it was. And if she was trying to get out of the business, she might be retiring. She might be 60 plus years old. And she's like, it's 9 PM. I went to bed two hours ago. You know, so there's nothing bad about what you did. It's just the time. So. And that was our fault. So we did we did the challenge too late. So no, 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 no. Yeah. It, it, it was uh, taking action. If everybody in here listening, take action immediately. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yep, that's a hundred percent. Like you can watch a million of these. You could come to every elephant challenge we do for the next year. And if you don't actually do something, um, you know, you're just wasting your time. You're not putting a dollar back in your pocket. And we'd rather you guys you know, be doing deals in the next 30, 60 days, if not sooner. So, but I appreciate you being so excited, truly. Like everything you did was right. Even like you asking me for a script and you knew how to handle that woman's objection. The one call that you actually connected with somebody, like you of all people don't need a script. Like you can think on your toes. So you're, you're gonna be great. I would recall those 60 people if you have time today and see what you get and then let me know tomorrow. Sure thing, we'll do. Hey, nice to talk to you. Hey, same here, thanks. All right, everybody, I hope this helped. Um, if you guys are uncomfortable with the homework that I gave at the end of the last hour, um, don't feel like you have to do it or rewatch the replay. Um, it's super easy, it's almost comically easy how, <laughs> how it is in Privy, um, so. <laughs> It just goes by super fast. And I think people think, I mean, I did it twice. So hopefully you guys have it. Um, if you guys don't have time, still be here tomorrow and be with us. You can always rewatch these at any time and take action then. I know it's asking a lot on the weekend and the weekend before a big, huge holiday that we all love to, to partake in. So I um, appreciate you all. And I hope that you guys have a good day.